We are in a housing crisis. We need to build more affordable housing. The affordability is an issue. The traffic here is unbelievable. We've allowed this drug crisis to get so out of control. I want to improve the shelter system. We need to preserve rental housing. The hardship that will cause on our city is going to be catastrophic. We are 11 days away from finding out who will be Toronto's next mayor. And tonight, the seven leading candidates vying for the city's top job are here with us for a lively two hours to debate, discuss, and dive deeper into the issues. From 299 Queen Street West, this is Toronto's breaking news CP24. Welcome to our special coverage, the Toronto mayoral debate. Good evening. I'm Lena Latifat. And I'm John Moore. Welcome to our viewers on TV, radio, and online. We are live on CP24, News Talk 1010, and across our digital streaming sites. Now, there are seven themes for tonight's debate, with seven one-on-one -on -one debates between two candidates chosen by a draw, with the other five candidates joining in for an open debate. We'll also have some lightning round questions chosen by us to keep the candidates on their toes tonight. We'll moderate the debate to ensure candidates keep to time and topic and make sure everyone is heard. Now, if a candidate's time is exceeded after a warning, we reserve the right to cut off their microphone, and we mean that. You'll also notice a countdown clock on your screen. That is so viewers can follow along. Representatives for each of the seven candidates took part in a random draw to determine the order of positions and the order of debate. So joining us live are Mark Saunders, Olivia Chow, Anthony Fury, Anna Bailau, Mitzi Hunter, Josh Matlow, and Brad Bradford. Before we get to the debate topics, we have some questions of our own. We're calling this the lightning round. The candidates don't know what these questions are, and they have very little time to answer. Sometimes we're just going to ask for a yes or no answer. Yeah. There will be 15 seconds, mind you, if they want to talk it out. Our first question is, what is your definition of leadership? And we're going to start with Olivia Chow. Being decisive, caring, creative, and being able to bring people together. Mark Saunders. It's about working through collaboration and understanding what the priorities are and then taking ownership of the decisions that need to be made to protect everybody. Your definition of leadership, Josh Matlow. Determined, thoughtful, and collaborative. Mitzi Hunter. Leadership for me is about accountability, it's about transparency, and it's about bringing teams together to do something great that you can't do alone. Anthony Fury. I'm willing to make the tough decisions to stand up for folks all across this beautiful city. Our candidates are providing their vision of leadership. Brad Bradford. Someone who's strong and decisive, not afraid to make a decision and move this city forward, working together and ushering in an era of accountability. All and right, candidates, thank you for that. Did we miss Anna Bailau? Anna, Anna Bailau. <laughs> Pragmatic, decisive, um, accountability, and creating opportunity. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Anabila. Now we can move on. Let's begin with our first debate theme tonight, housing and affordability. Owning a home was once a plan for a growing number of Torontonians. Now it is out of reach for many. The price of rent is up. The cost of buying a home or condo has reached record highs. This leads us to our first viewer question for the candidates. Let's have a listen. Hi. I'm Michelle. I used to live in Toronto until last year. My question to the candidates are, how are you going to make Toronto more affordable so people like me don't have to move out? All right, let's begin with Mark Saunders. You have 45 seconds to respond to Michelle's question. That's great, and thank you. But first, our, our hearts and prayers go out to those in Carberry, Manitoba for the recent tragic incident that's happened there. And thank you, everybody, for watching, because this is an important question. When I knock on doors, I hear about this. And I have a family that has concerns about this, too. Where are my kids going to be going? The number one issue is supply. And I strongly believe that Toronto government has to create the environment for those that build to build. And we have to be because we are scoring last when it comes to approvals. My plan involves making sure that there is a system in which, in one year, the approvals are going to go through. And that a navigator is going to take care of that approval all the way through making sure that builders and city is accountable 
And last but not least, making sure And that is time. Thank you, Mark Saunders. Olivia Chow, your 45 seconds. I have a volunteer in my campaign that just graduated from university, just going into convocation. Yalia should feel proud, and she does, but she's also really worried because by the time she pay her rent, near the end of the month, she has no money left whatsoever. This is because for a decade, the city of Toronto have not gone any affordable housing built. And I'm going to change it. I'm going to build 25,000 units of rent controlled rental buildings, some of them affordable, so someone like Dahlia can be able to stay in Toronto and actually have some money left by the end of the uh, Thank month. you, Olivia Chow. Here's where things get interesting. So Mark Saunders and Olivia Chow, you now have two and a half minutes to discuss housing and affordability amongst each other before the rest of the candidates can join in. Mark Saunders, you can start us off tonight. Great. And you know, thanks, Olivia, because you brought up very clearly you know, people have no money left. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty burning issue right now. And when we talk about no money left, we talk about property taxes. And you know what? People that own businesses right now need certainty, and so do homeowners. So when we talk about no money left, you're the only candidate that has not given anyone a number on what your tax is going to look like. You speak about modest, but your history back into 1997, you said clearly huge taxes over the next several years. So what is your number? How much are you going to be taxed? Uh, raising taxes to the city of Toronto taxpayers. Mark, we're talking about renters. We're talking about people. Never mind about property tax. We're talking about let affordability. me answer the question it's because you and know, affordability. And you yeah, said well, no money left, so let's talk about that. Let me talk about renters. <clears throat> With more than 52% of people in Toronto don't own a home. They are facing rent evictions. They're really worried so because by the time, but, but, again but, but for we the are talking debate. about house housing afford and affordability. But let me ask you a question: What is your plan for tenants like Dahlia? What are what about the thousand people that I spoke to two nights ago? Actually, last night, that are facing rent eviction. They're at Utopical. Let me tell you the problem. So they're, this is wonderful because building, you know, time after time, buildings, she's going to take ownership of building oh, houses. Mark, making it government-led, but, but she won't put a price tag on what it's going to take. All right, let's give Olivia Chow listen, a chance to respond, and then we'll come back to Mark Saunders. Listen to the people that are talking about their anxiousness. These are seniors that have lived in their building for 30, 40 years. They are facing, there's a thousand of them right on Lake Promenade that are facing evictions because the whole building are being sold. Several buildings are being sold right in that so area. I so what we need that. to do is to protect the renters, build affordable housing, so the number one and deal with the, the number one issue is the 90,000 households that are waiting, if I could that are waiting Let's for give Mark affordable housing. Here, it's a wonderful That's story. the issue. It's a wonderful story, and thank you, Olivia. The number one issue is supply. City government has not been building. My plan is to make sure we create the environment so that we can build. That is the number one issue. Well, the prices are going up because there isn't enough supply. But Olivia, but you're yeah, not even talking about how much time, you're going to pay. But for a long it, when time, when it comes to taxing, we are taxing, relying on the that's price our, that's our time. That's our time. Thank you, Mark built. Saunders and Olivia Chow. And I know the rest of you are all getting used to this format, <laughs> but let me explain that right now we're going into a segment where the other candidates each get 30 seconds. I hope they won't be interrupted. Then we can have a free for all, uh, and hopefully you guys will keep it clean. We start with Anthony Fury. Yeah, thanks, John. One of the reasons I'm running for mayor in the first place is I grew tired of hearing young people feel like they don't have a future in Toronto because they're not going to be able to afford a home. And I've pledged to phase out the municipal land transfer tax for first-time homebuyers. I'm going to get rid of that. That is the one single lever that City Hall has and the mayor's office has to bring down the price of homes. I'm also going to work on maximizing supply because primarily <laughs> we suffer from a supply problem and I will be laser focused on working with builders on that. Anna Bailao. I was uh, 15 years old when I moved to this country, and a few years later, my parents were able to bought a house, housing. And that felt like opportunity to me. And I want to make sure that youth and families have that same opportunity. That's why, as mayor, I will make sure that we intensify on our avenues by getting rid of red tape. I'll make sure that 20% of the units built, 57,000 units, are purpose-built rental. I will work with our nonprofits to make sure that there's a fund so they can speed up the approvals, and I'll lead the mayor's intensification task force to make sure that we update planning That's reform. your time. Mitzi Hunter? 
Thank you so much. And, you know, this week I was chatting with one of my team members, Daniel, and uh, he's still in school. Him and his friends, they're Gen Z, and they're already planning to leave this city because they don't see themselves being able to afford to live here. And this is our future. This is our talent. And our city can't afford to be hollowed out. And so as mayor, I have a plan to build 22,000 units of housing in six years so that Daniel and his <coughs> friends can actually live here. Unlike and that's, what's currently that's 30 happening seconds. right now with Thank housing you. now. Apologies. I'm going to be very, very strict. And I'm sure Lena is as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we turn to Josh Mantlow. John, there is not a neighborhood in this city where I don't hear from especially younger adults who have given up on their dream of home ownership. Torontonians of every age are struggling to pay the rent. And the stories that I hear, empathetic and caring, don't actually pay the rent or buy a home. I actually have a plan that top economists in Canada support. And I hope people go to votematlow.ca and actually read it because it is costed, we can pay for it, and we can move. And that's 30 ahead of seconds, house. Brad Bradford. Michelle, thanks for the question, and your story is emblematic of challenges facing young people, new Canadians, and seniors all across the city. And I've been saying the entire campaign, I don't want you to have to move to Hamilton if you don't want to. And that is fundamentally because we need more housing options in more neighborhoods for more people. I'm an urban planner by training. I used to work in the chief planner's office. I understand what needs to be fixed to build more housing. We have to start with unlocking government land. We have to convert old office space into affordable and housing. That's 30 Streamline seconds. the process. Brad Bradford, thank you very much. The housing crisis in Toronto affects everyone from sky high rents to sky high housing prices. We now move to five and a half minutes of open debate. All of you can get in on this. Uh, it is obviously about housing and affordability. And Anthony Fury, you get to go first. Yeah, one of the things that I've announced in my plan is that if a project is not approved, a building project within six months, it's going to be auto-approved. And I'm going to work with the city <clears throat> planning department to get to that uh, timeline there. Because right now, it's taking uh, two years or more to get a project approved. And every builder out there tells me they want to provide more affordable housing. But time is money. So if they are spending uh, so many years waiting on an approval process, dealing with red tape, which uh, all these city councillors run you know, against the, the, the for reality, mayor, have played a role Anthony, in, in contributing with, with all to due like respect, Josh The Mattel. reality is there's no one magic bullet. We're going to need to incentivize the private industry Why to build... Why you get it done faster Anthony, like I'm talking Anthony, about? Anthony, well, you are Why doing a lot of talking. Managed? I want to go be mayor and do it. Now, the city's signature plan, as you know, has been a failure. It's something that I have challenged as a councillor. Yeah, but you've Where, been, you've Mitzi, been part of Mitzi, that. You've, with been all, part of, you've been part of I've that. I've been part of challenging been City part Hall of that. to do better. Okay. Housing, I, now, Hunter, housing now. Mitzi Hunter, if you can let Josh Atlow finish, Mitzi, and I'll you know come to you. You know housing now has failed. It's, it's Anna complete knows failure. housing now has it's failed, even though she was behind Mitzi. it. Because not a John. single shovel is in the ground. We need to get going on a public build so we can build affordable housing on public lands and incentivize the industry to build. Mitzi Hunter. John, I want to go back. I want to say that. You know, I was the first of all the candidates to put out a comprehensive plan that will unlock public lands, 8,500 sites that the, that the city already owns, to build 22,000 that, units of housing you know that's not in the true. first phase Mi of Mi this Mitzi, plan. Mitzi, Mitzi, it's, Mitzi. it's just not well, Hang on listen, a second. Everyone can hold up these plans. The, the, okay, not all at once. Completely. It's completely. Not Every, even about Hold on that. a second. I'm going to just it's jump in here. Hold on. I, actually get I think most of you know that I used to teach uh, preschool. <laughs> so don't make me break out the it's parachute. True. Don, oh, Don, right. he will. I just, Anna you know, you know what? In, it, to solve housing, we need all orders of government at the table within the nonprofits, and we need the private sector because we need supply, absolutely, but the supply is going to solve part of the equation. We need to have government investment as well to have the deeper affordability and to have the supportive housing that we need. And, and, and the, the way that we do that, I agree. Okay. That we do that. I agree. Brad, Brad, it, has to be, it has to be a comprehensive approach. Anyone who tells slogans, you that, that there's the, one thing that can be done yep. to solve the affordable housing crisis is lying to you. Right. This is a complicated okay. issue, and we all have to work together to unlock more housing. But there are candidates up here that suggest building more bureaucracy is the way to build more housing. We have some of the slowest approval timelines on the continent. 
three years to get an application through before you can get shovels in the ground. That is not going to close the gap on this housing crisis. And I took exception to when Olivia and Chow this, said, oh. hey, we're talking about affordability, we're talking about renters. It is a reminder, and I suggest Olivia should look into this, renters pay, pay tax taxes. too. They well. do. So when renters she raises taxes, taxes by 20%, yes. that is going to filter I, it, right it, through it, to it your rent, and it's right. going to make the city but less I'm affordable I'm for people sorry. to live in. Olivia. That's a I huge concern for folks out there. Me, I yes. think I should actually address it. I totally know that renters, food and landlord, pay property tax. You know who I'm most worried about? So then why about? are you going to so, increase the, the property tax rate by 20%? Because that's going to make it more expensive for Dahlia, that's going to make it more okay. expensive All for Michelle, of Brad, Brad, everybody Brad, that wants to pay this a living. Living. If Olivia Chow can then later May I? Yes, thank you. Everyone is using the term affordable. You know what's really affordable? Affordable housing is a third of your income. That by the end of everyone. the month, there are there are actually yeah, money how are we, left. Olivia, how and are what we, we need to do is actually to build for deeply you affordable have not even housing. Bothered to tell them what and it's that is what All right. we really uh, Mark need Saunders to do. Mark Saunders has been struggling it's to break in. It's not just because I, Mark I Saunders been, and, and Mr. Ferry did very have, best have to be respectful uh, here because I think that the citizens really are listening and paying attention. We have a lot of undecided people that want to make a decision. The f folks up here that are saying we're going to take over building, just imagine if you want to buy a pair of shoes, you go to the shoe store. You don't go to government. So when you have government getting involved and the amount of bureaucracy that you're going to add on top of a critical problem, when government has declared that there is a housing crisis that they have created, you've got a problem. But again, Olivia Chow, we're talking 25%. Sorry, Brad, I'm adding five to it. My team has had a look at it. 25% increase in taxes. That is a but huge Mark, issue we're talking about over $2,000 a year. Mark, we're, we're John, talking about your homes, approach right? has not, failed not people for 10 it's years. A very yeah. For 10 years, the city of Toronto did what? not build anything. My and approach. as a result, we John, have a I don't know right. how Olivia okay. Chow okay. says that it's not building anything. Sorry. There's Sorry. all these cranes in the air. The problem is she only sees tax and government for the solution is housing. And you cannot have well, just housing without builders as well, without having the government at the table as well. There's lots of housing. We need more. We need Anna, more supply. We need, we need more affordable housing. Olivia, you know that there's 3,000 units under construction right now. If you don't Where know, you should it? know that I because you're it, you should you should know that because you you're running for mayor. But you should you're running for mayor. And I would put my record program. from affordable housing any day besides okay, yours when with, you were a with counselor. 20 seconds on the clock. I'll let Mitzi Hunter. Hold on a second, Mitzi Hunter. The point is that Olivia. There's huge concern right now because you have not told people what it's going to cost. And so what, why are you hiding this? Why can't you just say what it's going to cost? All right, you candidates, run, and that, you're is, candidates, here to be the that concludes this round's open debate. The facts from the people of this city. We have got to move why on here. That concludes this round's open debate. Our next lightning round topic is about encampments. And this is a yes or no question. The question is, do you have a plan to clear encampments in city parks this summer or by Labor Day? Let's begin with Mitzi Hunter. You have up to 15 seconds. <clears throat> I absolutely. I want to, in fact, give people the dignity of a home. So I will provide 400 supportive housing shelters right away, shelters and 2,000 supportive housing units so that people have a safe and secure place to live and the dignity of a home. We can't have people living in parks and ravines. Thank you, Mitzi. Andrew, Olivia in Chow. This city. It's, it's just a reminder this is a yes or no question. Olivia Chow. Oh, it's yes or no. Yes, I have four grandkids. I get it being, you know, they live close to a park. But remember, these tents have people inside. Just moving them from one park to another park to the subways is not going Olivia to Olivia Chow, is that a yes or a no? Uh, yes, but we no longer have the 45 seconds. Oh, oh nope. you've only got about 15 seconds, seconds. Oh, okay. here. It's a yes or no yes, question. Yes, we do. It's, a lightning it's, it's round. still in the same round. You bet. Mark Saunders, you're next. I have 15 seconds. The answer is absolutely I will. I'll speak more to the plan on that. It has to be done with dignity and understanding what the problems are and dealing with the root causes of the solution. But the answer is yes. Just a reminder, this is the lightning round. Uh, Josh Matlow, we'll come to you now. Yes, but with a housing first approach rather than a violent and ineffective approach that only saw our homeless go to other parks, <clears throat> laneways, under bridges, it was not effective and it wasn't humane. Anna Bailau? Yes, uh, with a housing first approach, and uh, my track record shows that. I've done it in my own community, and 
Olivia's Chow's track record shows that she used to give out tents back in the day. That's her track record. We're going to give Olivia Chow a chance to respond to that in the open debate. Anthony Fury. As the father of three small kids, I know what it's like to find needles in the park, needles in the playground. I know parents all across the city are experiencing it too. And my commitment to the families across the city is I will clear those tent encampments from our parks. I'll make them safe again. And Brad Bradford on clearing encampments in Toronto. Yes, we need to use a housing first approach, but people can't live in parks. They need to live in housing. We need supportive housing to give folks the dignity of a roof over their head and wrap around support so that they can be successful. I've done it in my community and I'll do it for Toronto. This sets the table very nicely for our next theme as we move into the second block of the debate, our second debate topic tonight, homelessness and encampments. City officials say there's been an increase in the number and size of encampments since the pandemic. Recent data shows there are 241 encampments at 95 locations, and that includes parks, green spaces, and right-of-way locations. And that leads us to our next viewer question. Take a listen. Hi, my name is Omer and I live in the village and my question for the candidate is, what is your plan to address the homeless crisis that we're facing in the area that is, has increased into more violence? Okay, let's begin with Olivia Chow and Anthony Fury. I'll remind you, you each have 45 seconds and then we go to a one-on-one -on -one debate. I'll keep on clarifying the format so you're more comfortable with it. We begin with Olivia Chow. Right, as I'm saying that I understand um, what is happening. Um, the problem though is that right now the shelters are full and every night, like tonight, we have at least two or three hundred people not being able to find any roof over their head. As a result, they're in parks, they're in subways, they're everywhere. Just moving them from one park to another park to the subways or to uh, libraries doesn't work. What we need to do is to create respite center 24-7. When they become homeless, they can get counseling, find a place, get a meal, and be able to settle. And then we will have rent um, called and Rent that's Supplement. 45 with a seconds. Thousand units Thank so you very much, Olivia house. Chow. That's 45 seconds. Anthony Fury. This election is a time for choosing. Do we want our city to look any more like those awful scenes that we see in places like Seattle, San Francisco, downtown Vancouver? Because Toronto is starting to slip in that direction. As the gentleman asking the question said, growing scenes of violence on our parks, in our streets, related to the encampments, related to the drug crisis. We are a compassionate society and we must care for these individuals, but at the same time, we can't let our standards slip any further. We can't let our children be more and more exposed to these challenges that we're seeing on the streets that are really creating a sense of lawlessness and disorder throughout this once great, beautiful city. And I want to fight for Toronto families of all walks of life across this great city to turn things around. Thank you, Anthony Fury. Now, it's two and a half minutes of Olivia Chow and Anthony Fury on this very same topic and uh, standing right next to each other. I, I hope we're going <laughs> to we're going to carry this off. Let's go. We begin with Olivia Chow. Right. Anthony, the shelters are full and some of them are refugees from Ghana because yep. they've been, you know, they're lesbian or gay and if they stay there, they get killed. Right. Um, and, but when they come to the country, they really can't get a work permit for a while. So they can't work. So they're stuck. They have no place to go. Where would you put them? So we have to find homes for them, which is why my plan actually have a thousand rent supplement units so that we could house them and then get them into All right, treatment. All right, great. Well, let's, let's help them out. The treatment that you talk about. But let's you help don't, okay. oh. Olivia Chow, I'll allow Anthony yeah, Fury to respond. Let's help You've asked out. a question. Let's work with Mr. Trudeau on the refugee file. It's a federal responsibility. But, but here's the thing. I, I am going to phase out those drug injection sites that are causing so much of this disorder, lawlessness on our streets. You know, I did that press conference in front of a Kensington Market school. I live right beside oh, it. Absolutely. Well, I, and yeah, I know the I park hope, really well. Well, I hope you can the be Belfield an advocate. Park. I was just right beside right it. Right across today. from that Kensington Market school. Right? The encampment there, there are people involved in the drug crisis who are going up and saying abusive things to four-year-old children. 
littering needles in front of the school. The city does, I've seen the email trail from that school to the city. The city has done nothing. We need right. a change in leadership. And I'm the leader who's gonna say we're gonna phase out those drug sites <clears> and <throat> replace them with problem. treatment centers. The a problem. compassionate society doesn't keep people on drugs, Olivia. I agree. It gets them off of them. But, but you do, but, do not agree with my plan but, to phase no, out the no, injection no, no. sites. An you want Anthony, more of them. Anthony, and that will create Anthony, more chaos on our streets. If you states. talk to doctor, like Dr. Vincent Lamb, top-notch doctor that actually wrote the plan for Edmonton. And he's a great a novelist as well. Absolute, yes, but he's a doctor. And I've spoken to other he's a doctors treatment doctor. What, what they said is it has to be a housing first policy. No kind of treatment would work if they don't have a roof over their head. So our children until have to be they, harassed no, until, until what, eight they have years, a roof 10 years, when head, we build the homes we, for they them? Don't, they don't know when to get the medication. They move around, and it's hard to track them. It's hard for the doctors to provide the treatment that you're talking about until they have a roof over their head. So a tent encampment, the first step, if some of them are addicted, not all of them, but if some of them are addicted, they need mental health support, the, all these things you talk about. But and I'm going to do all of that, but I'm going to put find families for them. first. We're going to work with Where the province, the federal government. Where are you going to government. find the housing My for them? My priority is families first and children first. All right, My you two can see the clock, so you know is that is time. Clear the parts. Anthony Fury, okay. Olivia Chow, thank you for that. Let's hear from the remaining five candidates on homelessness and encampments I, now. I Let's start a... with Anna Bailao. You get the first word. Thank you. <clears throat> encampments are not safe. They're not healthy. And, and they're not legal. And we need to use a housing first approach, uh, like I've done in my own community, to bring the social supports, the outreach, and to actually bring people directly into housing and or the shelter system. That is why I'm, as mayor, I will have support for shelters. I will double the amount of uh, modular supportive housing, which happens quickly. And I will deal with the federal government to deal with one third of the shelter users that are refugees today that should be in a Thank you, Anna Bailao. Well. Mitzi Hunter, your 30 seconds. You know, the current council has just declared that homelessness is a crisis in our city. I realized that it was a crisis when I walked into the Delta Hotel at the 401 in Kennedy. And it's filled with 450 people who are homeless. And this is unacceptable in our city. As mayor, I will provide the supportive housing that people need with the wraparound care and support so that people actually get the assistance <clears throat> to stay housed and to be safe in our city. Josh Matlow. Tents are not the answer to homelessness. Homes are the answer to homelessness. And there are individuals who need addiction treatment. They need mental health support. I have a plan to ensure that we provide outreach, ensure that individuals in our parks have access to shelters as a Band-Aid solution that are genuinely safe places where they are willing to go and also to ensure that there are rental supplements to lift them up to give them a path to housing. And we need to build supportive housing along with deeply affordable housing. And I have a plan Brad to Bradford. do that. It has to come together. <clears throat> Brad Bradford. You know, a few years ago, we had 6,000 shelter beds. Today, we have 9,000 shelter beds, and they are always 99% full. Building more shelters is not the answer. We need to build housing. And that's why in my community, I have built 59 supportive housing units with the wraparound supports, giving folks a dignity of a roof over their head and supports so, so that they can be successful in the community. We can't have people living in parks, and that's why we need to build more supportive housing as quickly as possible. Thank you, Brad Bradford and Mark Saunders. You get the last 30 seconds. Hey, Your time you. starts now. And as mayor, I won't do what City Hall has done, which is neglected this problem that didn't happen overnight, but happened from years and years of not paying attention. Yes, when we look at these encampments, this is not a safe environment. We have people that are living with mental health. We have people that are suffering from addiction. We have people that are going through economic situations. And we have criminals all within that self-containment. Dealing with those strands with the right resources that are out and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and having wraparound shelter entities in place until we build is important. Thank you, all Mark Saunders. Will be necessary. A reminder, we're talking homelessness and encampments in Toronto. Let's open up the floor for open debate. You have five and a half minutes. We're going to begin with Anna Bailao. Thank you. Well, like I said, I believe in a housing first approach and believe in, in having the shelters available. I don't believe in giving people tents. Olivia Chow, back when she was a councillor, she believed in people in giving people tents and actually incentivizing this kind of behavior. That's not what we need in a mayor. That's not the kind of leadership that we need in a mayor. We need somebody 
somebody that is actually going to deal with the issue in a compassionate way, but is actually going to provide Okay, you took a shot at Olivia Chow. Allow you took a shot at that's... Olivia Chow. I've got to give her a chance to respond I, here. I'm not sure what... What Anna's talking about, what I do know, though, is well, the I'm shelter sure that lots is of people full. Know that we're, we're talking and about. I, I do know that in the case of, say, Tent City, which we just talked about, was that we were able to persuade the Mr. Harris government at the time, it was progressive conservative, to provide rent supplement and have all of them house together so there's a sense of belonging, and then have Wood Green Community Center provide wraparound services for them. And a year later, the city of Toronto did a survey and did a study that all of these folks remain housed. And because they had a sense of community, because they have okay, so Mark all the treatment that's yeah. needed, okay, and let's... because of Wood Green Communities, let's hear from Mark Saunders now, please. Excellent work. That's how you could deal with encampments. Mark Saunders, please. No, the bottom line is we do have to remove the encampments, and we do have to do it with the proper dignity. But, you know, getting back to Ms. Chow here, who who's looking at how to create her budget and, and figuring out what items to make purchases for, I'm sure the tents will be included in that budget. And I'm sure that that will be the taxpayer's dollars on top of her 25% increase that she'll be putting on the property taxes. But we have to have outward facing resources 24 hours a day working with the issues so it reduces the calls for service for law enforcement. Then that way law enforcement can do what they're trained to deal with and the resources that we have are working outwardly dealing with people Mark, on a regular but where basis. Do you house them? We can't answer this question. How are you going to house these people? Well, there are 11,000 you know, people with all due living respect. in shelter. With all due respect. Where are you going to house them? Okay, respect. let's give all Olivia Chow and Mark Saunders a chance well, to finish up here. We any have heard, and I, I do want I'm going to just jump in here. Olivia Chow is not Brad Bradford. Bradford. any supportive and housing. And then we're going to come to Mitzi. Yes. Brad Bradford, please, respect, we can't Olivia hear you. Olivia so has Brad not Bradford. built any supportive housing. There have been a number of initiatives stood up over the city over the past couple of years. Crickets from Olivia Chow. You're a Torontonian. You're in Kensington. You weren't at any of those meetings. You weren't helping and advocate. You weren't supporting that. And that's a tough road to walk. I've done it. Where were you? Absent, My, crickets, I silence. I've done so we know we need to build more supportive housing, but you don't have a track Layton, record of so doing it. Sure so I don't have the Olivia zero Chow, confidence you have, you have 20 seconds. Right. Olivia We've Chow, you have hundreds. 20 seconds yes, to respond, we, and then uh, I have to go to Mitzi Hunter. <laughs> My ward have an excellent city councillor. Uh, his name is Mike Layton, and he built supportive housing. We have a lot of, in terms of downtown Toronto. But you're a running lot on your record, and you weren't services. there, Olivia. I, I was you not haven't, a you city haven't been a part of you this. Were. And I yeah. built it. I did it. Yeah. And you Where weren't there. Where is the affordable housing that you promised? I you built the, it. You were on you, the executive committee. Cedarville. Let's I've hear from Mitzi Hunter now. Five years. You know Hunter. what? And Olivia, and you've had an housing. opportunity yeah, to so, lead. So the, you didn't step up to the table. You haven't done anything. To, and now you're running hear, here and suggesting it's going to be different. Because I think that's what we're here. We've got one at a time. Mitzi Hunter. Absolutely. We've just come through a global pandemic. And one of the reasons we have so much homelessness on our street is that people need more mental health and wellness support in this city. We have to give people the help and support. There are we have a housing crisis and we also have a mental health crisis. And this is playing out on our streets. Anyone can see that. Our city is slipping, it's at a turning point, and we can't afford for it to be at a breaking point. So that is why, in addition to to the shelters, which Anthony we have Fury. to do quickly. We also need supportive housing, but we also need to actually have a program to build more affordable let's, housing let's in Let's give city Anthony Fury a chance to join this house. conversation, please. I thought this was a segment on encampments where we were hearing increasing concerns from people about the violence, the chaos, and nobody here running against me for mayor is talking about these real issues in terms of the needles in the park, the safety concerns that people are experiencing. I am experiencing. talking about well, that. Well, hang on. I just talked about, about the mental North, health North, and wellness. I just I have to jump on the issue here. I have to jump in and correct safe. the record. What Mr. Fury doesn't understand is we are talking about encampments. The solution to encampments is building housing. And this, this gentleman it's right here is running clearing the parks for our families. On opposing supportive clearing housing that's in front of us kids. right now. That's and, what and, and, at Willowdale, and Anthony, this guy is standing up where? and opposing where it. Today at council, where we moved that them? forward. But okay, I'm going to give Anthony Fury 15 seconds to respond. And then I'd like to hear from Josh Mallow and Anna Bailao. Where are you going to put people with the support? We've got to give Anthony Fury a chance. 
you can't, can't respond. Start with so clearing housing, the parks. Where are you going to put them? Oh, where I, are definitely you gonna want, put them? I definitely want to work with the province and the feds to build more well, housing. Where are you going to put where more housing? Fast Anna, is that going to happen? Family, this is a how family. How fast is that going to happen? And you Please. just want us to still have this this anarchy in the parks until no, but you get no, housing. No, but no, no, families first. I'm going to put the kids first. We're going to clean up the playgrounds. We're going to get those needles out of the parks and playgrounds. No, these are talking points rhetoric. We stand up for families first. Standing up for very supportive housing. Standing up for families is not rhetoric. This guy Don't is opposing those it. Children he doesn't who have, have, have a plan to address it. Kensington he is fear mongering. You know he won't show any leadership to actually deliver housing that Thank will you. get people out of parks Thank and have you, them to get a roof over their head. That is the end of our first or our second open debating um, scene. I was going to say <laughs> it was very dramatic, uh, but now we move on to a lightning round. So everybody, take a breath. Those at home listening and watching, these questions come as a surprise to our candidates, and I will remind the candidates: the whole <laughs> art of responding here is in one word or one phrase and we just keep on moving. So, what is the most Toronto thing about Toronto? With one word or phrase, we begin with Brad Bradford. City Council, it's endless debate, deferral, delay. The inability to make, make a decision and move the city forward. I'm gonna change that. Mitzi Hunter. Okay, the most Toronto thing about Toronto is that we are a city in a park right on a lake. We just have a beautiful city and we need to care for it and make sure that we have a bright future for everyone. Olivia Chow. Most diverse people in the globe all living in harmony right here <coughs> at the city of Toronto. Mark Saunders. Number one thing is multiculturalism. How we embrace the values and the cultures within our city and there are over 200 of them. We don't realize how good it is because we've lived here but when you go other places that's when you start Thank seeing you. Toronto. We move to Josh Matlow, most Toronto thing about Toronto. The extraordinary diversity of our people, whether it be geographical, ethnocultural, religious, there are people from <clears throat> around the world who call this home and once they're here, okay. they're Torontonians. Thank you, Josh Matlow. Anna Bailau. The most uh, important thing in Toronto is the opportunity that it gives its people and we need to bring it back, that we need to bring the promise of Toronto back. <clears throat> Anthony Fury. How we love our sports teams. I love the Jays. <laughs> Who doesn't love the Jays? Come on. What about the Raptors, Go team. Anthony? What about the Raptors? Raptors, Raptors too. Raptors. Raptors too, but I love the Jays. <laughs> all right, thank you all for those responses. Our next theme, let's talk about that, transit. <clears throat> The issue of transit and safety on the TTC, that has been front and center during this campaign as the transit agency dealt with a number of violent incidents on subways since the fall. Just a few months ago, a 16-year-old boy was fatally stabbed at Keele Station in what police described as a random attack. Let's hear our next viewer question. This is from Manuel. Hi, my name is Manuel. I live in Scarborough. My question for the candidates is, what will you do to improve safety in the subway for everybody? All right, Anthony Fury and Anna Bailau, you have 45 seconds to respond to that question. Let's begin with Anthony Fury. And you know, whatever meeting I have across the city, whatever the original uh, topic of the meeting is, it invariably goes back to people not feeling safe on the subway. People say, I used to let my 13-year-old ride the subway, not anymore. And it is sad and tragic to hear this. Now, as mayor of Toronto, I've committed to hiring 500 new police officers, which sounds like a lot, but only brings us back to where we were at in 2014. And that will include an enhanced visible presence in our communities, on our streets and on public transit, working alongside TTC special constables who I will give them and work with the province to give them the enhanced powers that they have asked for. We're suffering from a bit of a broken windows problem right now on public transit where it's a mess, people are using it as a shelter system. And that is time, Anthony bad. Fury. I will put an end to that. Anna That'll Bailau. be my focus. Your 45 seconds. You know, I used to have a part-time work as a teenager with my mom, and we used to take the subway at night, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and we always felt safe. And that's the kind of safety that we need to bring back, that people feel safe. And to do that, we need to make sure that we have a system that is safe, that is convenient, and that is reliable. That is why I will reverse the cuts on the TTC so people can rely and come back. But I will also ensure that there's eyes and ears by hiring more staff, from constables to supervisors to cleaners, to make sure that they're cleaner. Deploy cameras across our system as well well and including Wi-Fi with all carriers as well. 
I will make sure that we also have mobile mental health clinics to deal with the issues that we see in the subways, but honestly that we also see in our streets as well. And expand the Toronto Community Crisis Response, which is also an alternate response for somebody in mental health distress. And Abaila, your time is up. Anthony Fury and Abaila, you now have two and a half minutes to discuss this same topic. We're talking about transit and safety on the TTC. Anthony Fury, you can start us off. Yeah, and Anna, I know you're on council for many years, pretty much throughout the entire tenure of, of the headcount of the police decreasing, not prioritizing police. What we're experiencing right now, Anna, whether it's the encampments, whether it's all these cars getting stolen. You know when you go canvassing, I'm knocking on doors, and everyone says their, their neighbors are getting their cars stolen all the time. Whatever that is, or the public transit issues going on there, it all relates back to the fact that we have not invested in our officers. I'm proud to be pretty much the only person running for mayor who hasn't at some point uh, uh, bowed to the people who are wanting to take resources away from the police. It's I, just unacceptable. I, I'm going to invest in more resources to I, make the I transit safer so people's teenagers police. can go on Can I again. answer? I've su I support a well-funded police with the resources to expand our neighborhood programs, to improve our 911 services as well. I support, we just, uh, council just uh, approved the hire of 200 uh, officers, which are, are needed uh, in, our, in our city as well. This is not an either or. You need to have the police and well-funded, but you need it to be focused on the issues that we're talking about auto theft. Then crime, why have we gotten rid of crime, so many police crime, under your watch? We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not getting rid of We had an increase in police in police budget the of 12 percent. The headcount is down 12%. so much now. And under we your just, watch and, on council, And there's that's a just fact. been an approval of 200, of 200 cops. The, the, the issue is as well that we need to have alternate responses for things that the police shouldn't be responding, like somebody in mental health this, uh, distress or homeless. This that's is true. not an either or. We need to allow our officers to do the work that they're there to so do. So you agree with me. Uh, Thank you. I am agreeing with you. It seems like it. I, I think that we need to have the, the, the service focusing on the crime, focusing on, on the auto theft, focusing on that, and have the appropriate response and the investments on the other, on the other areas. Absolutely. And also but deal with the roots of, of crime as well. We were talking about it. Well, Anthony, that's very interesting. Things like, things like, you know, having supportive housing, having programming for our youth, having all that, that is part of the solution as well. You it's are the long so right. term. It's the long term, and and we can't just say we're going to well, invest on that, like other here. candidates in here are saying. Let's invest on that and reduce the police. That's not what we should be no, doing. I agree with you Absolutely on that. Absolutely not, because we in a growing city, we need to make sure. We've got twenty seconds let, let, let left here. here. Let's, let's, let's let Mr. Fury here, here's respond Here's the thing: to that. it's all related the drug crisis on our streets that we see. It used to just be located to a very small part of this city down at Young and Dundas Square. Now it's spilling over everywhere. I'm the one who exposed the fact that taxpayer dollars are being used uh, to provide crack pipes with the City of Toronto sticker logo on it. Paid by the That's our time. Thank that you. It is distributed Anthony by Fury. Thank you very much. Thank you very, much. very much. much. There will it's be an open debate. You'll have it's a Ontario chance. Government. Anna Bailao and Anthony Fury. Thank you. Uh, now we turn to, and remember, there will be an open free-for-all with all seven candidates. But first, each of the five remaining get 30 seconds. This is on transit and safety on the TTC, and we begin with Mitzi Hunter. A world-class city like Toronto must have a transit system that is safe and reliable. As mayor, I have a five-point plan for TTC safety, and that includes pairing our transit officers with social workers to get people the help and support that they need, upping the patrols on transit stations by Toronto Police Services that are already in the neighbourhood, and also making sure that we have ambassadors around that to provide community safety walks and ensure that that station is clean, it's well maintained, and we have eyes on the street Thank you, well. Mitzi Hunter. And remembering this is the portion of the debate where everybody gets 30 seconds on their own to speak their mind. Josh Matlow, 30 seconds on transit and safety. I'm going to get the waterfront LRT built along with the Eglinton East LRT to U of T Scarborough and up to Malvern and Scarborough along with the Shepherd extension over to Nielsen. I'm going to reverse the cuts to the TDC. I'm going to be investing in a rapid response team to be there to make sure that they can identify individuals with the potential of violence and de-escalate them before it begins, working with transit control. There needs to be a comprehensive strategy to make sure that the TDC is safe, reliable and more affordable and I'm going to get it done. Thank you. Uh, Brad Bradford, 30 seconds. The TTC is the third largest transit system in North America. 
it's also the least subsidized from the province and the federal government. That means we rely on ridership to keep the trains running. Ridership is down because people do not feel safe. You see it in the body language at the subway every day. People's backs are jammed against the wall because they feel like they might end up on the tracks. I will end the endless debate deferral delay on platform edge doors. We will get those installed. We will have more special constables, mental crisis response teams. Thank you very much, and Brad And make people Bradford. safer on transit. We turn to Mark Saunders. Thank you very much. You know, when I knock on doors, that is one of the number one things that I hear over and over again, not feeling safe on TTC. As your mayor, I'll make sure that I'll create a culture of safety so that you and your families can ride on TTC. TTC is not a homeless shelter. TTC is not a mental health agency. I'm going to hire 200 special constables that will be highly trained because they will be turned over to the Toronto Police Service. They'll be highly trained to deal with people that live with mental health. And I'll have a lot of other things on MarkSaundersForToronto.ca. And that and is time. Thank Thanks. you, Mark Saunders. Olivia Chow. Miguel, thank you for your question. Listen to the mother of the 16-year-old that was murdered at Q Subway. She said we can take better care of each other. We can create social conditions that won't get people into a crisis situation by building more housing, dealing with mental health issues, all of those things. We need to do that. We also need to invest in TDC, bring the staff back so there's more eyes and years at the subway, and they are the ones Olivia that Chow, keep us safe. Olivia Chow, your 30 seconds are up. As we open this up to an open debate, we will have a chance to do that. I want to refer to an article just published today in the Toronto Sun by former TTC chair Karen Stintz about self-service on subways at the beginning of this campaign. Many of you talked about the subject and how it relates to safety. The former TTC chair worries the sole sourced deal with Rogers will not deliver equal cell phone coverage within the tunnels while the federal government has called for cell service throughout the system to include all providers, including Bell, that's the parent company of this station, where do you stand on this issue? You have five and a half minutes. We're going to begin with Mitzi Hunter. Yeah, so I just want to correct uh, the station. It is Kipling Station where that 16-year-old uh, was, was killed. And, um, you know, I spoke to one of the moms in the area, and she says that's all they talk about. They no longer allow their kids to ride the ride the TTC and that's why I believe that we have to get ridership up on the TTC I'll be starting it at 5 30 a.m. because I believe that people will get out of their cars especially those shift workers and get on our transit system I want to make it free for seniors as well as wheel trans users okay. we've got to make okay. sure that our, it's, our it's system is well so I'm utilized. getting signals from Mark Saunders here okay so with the cell phone issue we can do better but my plan is better because it speaks to an assist button that assist button hits every person that works within the TTC plus using cameras <laughs> to see what the problem is, identifies with it, and deals with it. But the bigger issue is being, that. being tone deaf. That is a help. Yeah. That is a help. That is a help. Sorry, folks. Uh, Read the plan. Uh, it speaks a uh, different uh, uh, My uh, bigger uh, thing, uh, though, uh, my bigger you, thing uh, though uh, that uh, I uh, need uh, to you, address. With the technology okay. that we have today. Not all at once, or we're going nowhere. Hold on. Hold on. Just allow Mr. Saunders to finish. They haven't read my plan. I want to finish my sentence. Last week, Olivia Chow said, the TTC is safe. CRTC. Last week, you said yes. the TTC well, your was question safe. Is about, okay. John, wait, may I, may can I we, answer can the question? Okay, I'm going to move to question. Josh Matlow because yeah. we're starting then, we'll we'll the, 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 answer, the, the answer to your actual yeah, question actually, is that it shouldn't that. just be one company, company's customers who have the opportunity the and the role. No, no, that's not. Mitzi, that's not true. Stop that. You signed the deal that Toronto is Mitzi, I was just trying to answer a question to John. This is the deal that you signed. Mitzi, okay, Mitzi. First of all, we'll allow that's Josh not, to finish. Like, factually true, but also, customers of one company shouldn't be exclusive to have safety and reliability in the TDC when it but comes why did to sell. Mitzi, stop that! I didn't sign the, the deal. The you know deal was signed Mitzi, by this Mitzi, council. Mitzi, that's why Mitzi. we know we that's why we have such a poor Mitzi. distribution. The, the BAI deal was signed in 2012. Cell phone service. Mitzi, the BAI deal was signed in 2012. Why do you Mitzi, think about the fact read, that every, have you read every the customer agreement. should be able so have you, have to ride okay. TTC Mitzi. and use their cell phone? Uh, John, why I, I don't that Mitzi Hunter, if you can Mitzi Hunter, if you if you can we're kind of going down a rabbit hole here. Josh Matlow, if you can finish. Mitzi has not clearly read the agreement. 
I oppose having one company have an exclusive deal. It should be open to all customers who are riding the TTC in the subway to have the reliability and safety to have access to cell coverage. Okay, I let's agree. Anna Bailao. You know John, uh, hold on a second, Brad Bradford. We'll get to you, Anna Bailao. Absolutely. As mayor, I will guarantee that we'll have all carriers uh, in the subway. I will make sure that that contract and all carriers are in there. And that we Anna, actually can use it as a safety. There are you can use it. You that. can use it as a safety instead of a, 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 an assistant button that is a lot less safe. You have okay. apps. Here, you have right. technology if, nowadays if, that actually, if you have the wireless, that's what you okay. need because of if, the safety. If it's I not can a remind button that people have to get up when everybody you. sees. If I can remind but, everybody for a moment, we're going down a bit of a, a, right. a side yes, issue here. This is about TTC and safety. Here's the reality. Okay, Brad. All of us on the stage here probably agree that. It doesn't matter who your carrier is. You should have access yep. to safe, yes. effective yes. wireless and cellular communications That's right. on the TTC. The challenge is right now when folks are trying to get back into the office, and we have among the slowest return to office rates in North America, they are either stuck in gridlock or they're not riding the TTC because they don't feel safe. We need real concrete solutions to bring ridership back. And that is why having a security presence with special constables supported by the Toronto Police, by having mobile crisis response teams dedicated to the TTC but, so but that people, people can get okay. the help it, when it, and where they need it. We haven't this heard is how much we from Olivia Chow in this block. She's got her back, hand up. And this is how we get Thank people back Brad on Bradford. the TTC. Olivia Chow. CRTC should force Rogers to do so. If they don't, then it needs to be opened up so that every carrier would have the opportunity and they could work together and deliver safe <laughs> um, internet access for every resident of Toronto. Okay, Anthony Fury. It's not enough to be able to use that cell service. There has to be someone to answer the call and respond to the call. And right now we know that there are so many situations where people are calling 911 and there aren't the resources to respond to the call. So my plan to hire 500 additional police officers is to be able to better respond to calls. That's why uh, when someone's car is stolen, they tell me, oh, well, I called the police. What did they do? Well, they just wrote a report. That was it. They didn't do With anything. With 40 because seconds on the clock, I'm going to allow Mark Saunders to weigh in. Resources. Thank you, Nancy Fury. I ride the subway. Most people will not hit the help button because the people that are causing the disorder are people that live with mental health or suffering from addiction. When you hit the button that exists right now, it stops everything, fire, police, ambulance show up. My assist button keeps the subway moving, identifies what the issue is, and then puts the right resources in play. And if the you biggest watch delay the platform, the 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 it has smart. nothing to do, it's it has too nothing late. to do with it's cell too phone. Little, too late. But the very reason it's, that people have expressed, too little, too late. when you hit, you have to answer 20 questions it's on the phone. Little, if you can get your 911 call on time. You cannot rely on that homeless lives or this round's open debate. to restore That concludes this round's open debate. Thank you, candidates. You ready for another lightning round question? This one has to do with artificial intelligence, AI. And the question is, has your campaign used intelligence uh, AI to craft your messages or pictures to voters? It's a yes or no question. We're going to begin with Anthony Fury. Yes, and we put it through the feeder with other candidates, and several others have too. So there's still some uh, things to be worked out with AI. Did you see that TSNJ segment where there's some some funny AI stuff going on there? So the yes or I think no we're going to have a couple laughs Thank you, as, as we Fury. proceed here with uh, Brad, learning Bradford, more about please. AI. No, we have not. The funny AI segment I think we were referring to was when Mr. Fury put out a graphic with three arms on an individual. We haven't used any of that. It's just straight content from me. Thank you, Mitzi Hunter. Yes, so someone on my campaign used ChatGPT, and she did tell, she disclosed that to me, <coughs> and she fact checks her information before providing them. But no one has used anything to create, re replicate people on the Olivia campaign Chow. using AI. No, uh, our campaign is about people, so it's people first. We have a lot of volunteers helping out. We don't need AI. <coughs> Mark Saunders? No. Josh Matlow? So uh, we're actually using real pictures, and I just want to share, this is my family. That's uh, <laughs> Melissa and Molly, and they're real, and none of them, no one in our pictures have three arms, Anthony. And just to fact check, <laughs> Mark's does have some component we're, of check. We're going to have time AI for open line. debate, I here's promise, my, uh, but we've got to let Anna Bailao get in here. as well. <laughs> Anna Bailao. Let's make sure. Everyone's got okay. a brown plan. <laughs> no. Anna uh, Bailao, where's please. Yours? <laughs> No, we, we haven't used it. We have lots of volunteers, uh, 
amazing volunteers, a great team, and uh, the pictures are all real, all real, all of us, <laughs> all of the team, and, uh, Thank you and very our much. supporters as well across Remember, the city. Remember, it's the lightning round. Yeah. Uh, our next topic is crime and policing. The Toronto Police Operating Budget is more than $1 billion, the biggest line in Council's budget. Public safety and how to best deliver police services has been one of the topics discussed on the campaign trail. What is your plan to make Toronto safer? Let's begin this discussion with Anna Bailao, followed by Mitzi Hunter. Remember, you each have 45 seconds, and then you can take each other on. So we start with Anna Bailao. I, I believe in uh, funding our police. I believe in having a good relationship in our neighborhoods and having a good neighborhood policing program. And uh, as mayor, that's what I will do. Uh, it's unacceptable that people are calling 911 and it's taking them 20 minutes to get an answer. That's why I will fund uh, police services. But I will also ensure that we have the Toronto Community Services Unit, which is an alternate response unit for people in mental health distress, uh, expanded to 100% of the city. Right now it only responds to 60% of the city. And mobile <coughs> mental health clinics. This is not an either or. We need to ensure that our officers are focused, like, like I've said in this debate before, on, on the crime, that they have the resources, they have the time to focus on auto theft, on homicides, Thank on crime. Thank you, Anna Bailao. Thank responses. you. Thank you. Let's turn to Mitzi Hunter. 45 seconds on police and crime. So I've been a champion of public health being part of the solution by making gun violence a public health issue. This is something that, as the MPP in Scarborough Guildwood, I have put legislation behind that. You know, the violence that's occurring in our city uh, is devastating. Just um, in the last year, I've been to two high schools where young people were shot and killed on school property. And when I talk to the principal, the parents, the members of the community, the students, they don't ask for more police. What they ask for are more supports for young people so that we can actually get to the root cause and we can stop the violence from occurring in the first place. And I, as mayor, that is something that I am investing Thank in. Thank you, Mitzi Hunter. Thank you. And you can continue that thought as we move into a two and a half minute debate, which will discuss crime and policing in Toronto. Anna Bailao, you and Mitzi Hunter will exchange and we begin with Anna Bailao. Yes, I, I believe that it is important to have supports and, and, um, uh, and outreach to the youth and treat it as a public health and have programs as well. But in a Thank growing you. city, we can also not have the police available and have a reduction in the police force. So how are you going to pay for that, Anna? Because you mm -hmm. want to wait for, for Ford to upload the Gardner and the DVP. He said he's not going to do that. M Mitzi, so how are you going to pay Mitzi, for these critical programs? Mitzi, we have a $1.5 billion budget hole right now. And I've put a practical solution that we need to negotiate. And now everybody has agreed. And, and the, we're at that phase of the campaign that everybody has agreed that we need a new deal with the province of the city because we have a fiscal imbalance. Yeah, but how imbalance. are these young people going to wait for that? What is, it? No, what no, is no, their they city? You don't, don't, you don't have to wait young, for that. Young we just said to me, actually, he said to me, we just during, actually I just want to tell you what he said. 200, I want to tell you what this young man said. Anna you can allow Mitzi Hunter I want to tell you what this young man said to me. Because he said to me, Miss, after two years of being out of school, being out of programs, and we had to stay home, what are you going to do to invest in us, in our young people? They can't wait. We can't lose a generation. We have to make those investments now. That's why I'm, I'm investing in 16 more youth hubs in our public library system, and, expanding and that, that so young people have that access why I, to those I create, preventative programs. And that is why I create opportunities in, you know, communities like the Golden Mile, where we're actually bring something that is community benefits agreements, which actually yeah. is agreements to yeah, bring well, jobs and Well, you're welcome. I was at the provincial level that brought that program into play. Wait, can I finish? brings uh, apprenticeships, brings opportunities, brings careers, brings uh, opportunities for these youths to yep. have a future as well. But as she, yeah, I, I support that. Was saying, it's actually in my plan. It, it, it's, it's in, in mine as well. I've done it. It's written in my plan, which is fully costed and funded. I've done it it's in different communities yours. and will continue to do it as mayor. We also just approved, uh, uh, the city approved 200 police officers that are going to be deploying as well. This cannot be an either or solution. We need a good services. It's unacceptable the people are calling 911 and it's taking them 20 minutes to get a response to their issues. I believe in investing yeah, in the communities as, services as well. Have I believe happened in these, while in you these, were there these, at City Hall. You guys are asking, these, these people that are, are at 
the city hall are asking for a promotion and after it's, creating this mess. Yes. And you, you talk about your plan that at all. talks about money that 97% of the reserves And that is time. Let's see, see how true. Anna Bailau, thank you for that. We are going to have to keep it moving here. And staying with crime and policing, Anna Bailau, Mitzi Hunter, thank you. We have to move on. Staying with crime and policing, let's bring in the other five candidates. Now you each have 30 seconds to respond. We're going to begin with Josh Matlow. Uh, wow. Um, yes, we have a $1.5 billion uh, shortfall in the budget, and we're going to have to make decisions. Uh, you know, the police should be doing what they're best at, but we also cannot continue to increase the top line item budgets. We need to begin investing, given that we have to make decisions, into the root causes of violence, into our communities. And the reality is violence doesn't begin on the TTC or begin anywhere else. It actually begins in our communities, and we need to make sure that we support those people there so that they live better paths and, frankly, then Thank society Thank you, Brad Bradford. Well, just this year, Council approved a $48 million increase to the police budget. That was good for 200 more frontline officers. And I remind folks that we had 700 more officers in 2003, 20 years ago, than we have today. So we have to support them. But we also need other supports that help respond to the types of challenges that we're seeing out there on the streets. And that is folks that are dealing with mental health crisis, folks who are dealing with homelessness. We need to have an approach that better responds to that. I have a plan for that. It's not either or, it's both. That's how we That is time. Mark safer. Saunders, your 30 seconds on crime and policing in Toronto. Random crime and disorder has gone up. That is a fact. As your mayor, I'll make sure that that is looked after. Because if you don't feel safe, our city's not healthy. And if it's not healthy, it's not vibrant and productive. I will hire 400 more officers because right now, the priority one calls are taking approximately 20 minutes. That is where they're needed the most. And I'll make sure that that is supported. But Olivia Chow, every opportunity in her years of experience, has wanted to defund the police each and every time she has made a vote when it comes to policing in our city. Olivia Chow, your response and your statement. Well, Mr. Mark is just wrong, but I also feel the unease um, that are out there. People are feeling less safe when they ride TDC. They are worried about being put on hold for so long for 911. If you listen to the police officers themselves, they would say that there are a lot of calls that are mental health calls. And what we need is to actually send the mental health experts, which the city of Toronto have, which is called a community crisis unit, and help Anthony Fury, calls. last word to you. Police officers and health professionals tell me so many of these random attacks that we're seeing play out on our streets, on public transit, they relate to the drug crisis. And as mayor, I'm going to phase out those drug injection sites and replace them with treatment centers. Because a compassionate society doesn't keep people on drugs, it helps get them off of drugs. And by doing that, we don't only help them reclaim their lives, but we help make our streets safe, our transit safe, and our families safer. That's my commitment to the families of this city. Thank you. Time for another open debate now. Reminder, we are talking about crime and policing. You have five and a half minutes, and I'm going to be tough here. Let's start with Josh Matlow. The, uh, the best way that we can address violence in our society, violence on the TTC, is to finally address the root causes of it. And, um, you know, I believe that we need to support the police, as I said, to do the best that they do when it comes to, yes, like ensuring that people don't have cars, you know, just stolen out of their driveways and investigating, um, uh, you know, crimes that occur. But we can't just react to it. We can't just believe that we're going to arrest our way out of the problems of society. You know, when I walk downtown, when we I walk... Can we respond to it, though? Because we don't have the resources to respond even to those car theft calls or even more dangerous you know, violent but, calls. That's but the Anthony, problem. It's Anthony, about resources what, what evidence, for police. What evidence actually shows is the more that we can actually address the root causes and... Evidence mental, doesn't show Anthony, we need no, no, fewer no, police. So, Anthony, we have to talk I, one at a time. I, we when folks at home are having a tough time hearing you candidates, so we have to do this one at a time. opportunity they have... I see everybody raising their hands. I'm going to give Anthony Fury 20 seconds seconds to respond to that and then I'm going to come to Mark Saunders because he raised his hand first. The bottom line is we suffer from a resources problem. We're dealing with a basic cause and effect issue here. We have hundreds of fewer police than we did 10 years ago. They don't have the ability to respond to the calls. That police headcount has dwindled under the city councillor's tenure, under the former police chief's tenure. As mayor of Toronto, I will stand by our officers, I will invest in them, and I will give them the resources they need to keep our families safe so we can feel safer. Thank you, on Anthony our Fury. Mark Saunders. There is an increase of random crime. 
That requires law enforcement. We can also deal with the root cause, which I will do, because I have that mayor's wellness circle. But again, there are people up here that voted to remove firearms from the police while I was chief. So it's kind of hard to take the seriousness of some of these folks. But bottom line is Miss Chow, I was over, a long and over, time, again, so you over and chief, over again, over and over again, has Mark, done everything she has I, done I, I, to make sure she again. wants to defund the police. I'm sorry. You, I have a scroll. You, okay, you, you took a shot at Olivia Chow. You took a shot at Olivia Chow. I have to give her 10 seconds it's to respond to this. Shot, there are other people who want to get in here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Mark is wrong again because I wasn't on council when he was the police chief. I'm sorry. You're on the but board. But you know what we need to do? I'm not on the board either. Uh, <laughs> well, but board. let me talk about intimate partner violence. No one is talking about that. That actually you know what a lot of folks that are leaving violent relationship you know what they you need know. their moms and their kids need a safe place to be <laughs> you know what and that's Brad Bradford and the, then Anna Bailao right. one of the challenges that I've identified in this campaign is that on any given day in Toronto there are more than 1500 violent offenders out on bail and for years the resources haven't been in place to effectively deal with that that is why I have a common sense approach to stand up bail compliance units Officers stationed at 17 divisions across the city, 68 additional officers to do the bail compliance checks. Because right now the, the criminals know nobody's watching. And we have seen far too many times when violent repeat offenders go out and wreak havoc again. And you know what? It's a good idea. And that's why the Premier agreed with me and came out with a statement saying, the province was going to fund those bail compliance units and municipalities yes, because it's long overdue and we need to, right, it's long overdue and Anna they can my position and they're going to help Toronto make sure we have bail compliance units you know, so we can keep tabs Lowe, please? on those violent offenders. The police offenders. budget is 90% salaries and those salaries are, you know, uh, mediated. And we know that Josh Matlow has said that he's going to freeze the budget for three years. So we know that mo the, the numbers of offices are going to reduce. But we haven't heard from Olivia Chow what she's going to do with the budget of the police. Raise is, the she gonna, is she going to freeze? Oh, she'll the budget it. of the police? Is she going to cut the budget of the police? Yes. I mean, when you have when you have the response you, that you have, you I have think it's that. fair. It's fair that we have that question answered. So, Olivia Chow, we're going to give you a chance to respond to this, and then I want to hear from the others, please. Well, if the 911 calls, some of them go to the mental health calls, then some of the funds needs to go towards mental health support. And we are, in fact, looking at reducing are you gonna the 911 calls wait times, which increased quite a bit Olivia, after are you gonna freeze Mr. The Saunders uh, became the chief. Mark and, Saunders. And he had a 12% And then we're going to hear from Mitzi Hunter. Yeah. 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 Olivia, Olivia, and up, wait. Okay, yeah. candidates, yeah. candidates, yeah. candidates yeah. look, yeah. if I have if, to cut your mics tonight, I will, I will do that. <laughs> Mark you. Saunders, please. You know, Olivia, you I, I wasn't you, on board, by the way. You are a fantastic verbal figure skater. You haven't answered a question head on yet. You said, quote, you're ashamed of the police when you're on the board. That states enough. When everyone's asking you if you're going to defund, you didn't even answer. No. You danced around. I, I yeah, of course you are. Every did. opportunity she, well, you, you have, have you have wanted to defund. I'm sorry. All right, Mitzi no. Hunter, please. Wait, hang on. Candidates, no. this, one at a time, please. So, no, we're going to give Mitzi Hunter a chance to respond. You just said... You I said you I'm not defunding said, the police. Are you what I did you would take say the, you would take is Mr. Sander is and wrong do other things. because he said I was on the police service board or I'm on council. He was the chief from 2015 Bitsy to Hunter, 2015. Bitsy Hunter, please, last so 15 I seconds. Olivia, answer the answer question. <laughs> For once, answer the, the question. Or the police service board. Like, so, stop dancing yeah, around it. You I, bob, you lead, you dodge. Answer the question. Things Olivia, up. Olivia, just and answer like, the what question. What you did say wrong. is that you because are going to... We are going to give... We've run out of time here, but I'm going to give... That's not leadership, folks. Candidates? Candidates. Bob and Dodge and Weaven can answer the question. Brad Bradford, please. We're going to give Mitzi Hunter 15 seconds to finish her thought, and then we're going to move on. I can't hear you. One at a time, please. Mitzi Hunter. I didn't say I'm defunding the police. Mitzi Hunter, please. Well, what you did say, because I'm, I'm listening for the answers, Olivia, from you as the people in, in the city deserve to hear from a straight answer. You did say you were going to take money and do other things with them, which means that you're going to leave the police with less. And, and you need to be transparent. You need to be open and honest about that because people want to make sure that they understand what it is that they are voting for come June 26. And you can't just keep hiding those answers. Okay, You've got thank to be you. straight. Thank you. That brings uh, the major part of this debate on crime and policing to a close. But it's time for another lightning round. Remember, these are very quick questions the candidates have not seen that are a measure of character and humor. And the question this time is, what is your favorite movie 
We'll begin with Anna Bailao. La vida bella. Uh, Anthony Fury. Dirty Harry. <laughs> Brad Bradford. <clears throat> Apollo 13, Tom Hanks, my favorite actor. Story of adversity, happy ending, it was a good one. Mitzi Hunter. Star Wars, all of them. Olivia Chow. Uh, Sarah Pauly's Woman's Talking. Mark Saunders. <laughs> it's a combination between reality TV and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. Oh, Josh, good one. Josh Matlow. <laughs> I'd honestly be pandering to you if I made one up. I don't have a favorite movie. There are many that I like. That's just the reality. All right. All right. Candidates, uh, interesting responses. Thank you for that. Let's move on. Our next topic tonight is one that most drivers in this city talk about on a daily basis, gridlock and the gardener. From empty streets during the pandemic to now nearly hour-long commutes made worse by road closures and downtown construction projects. And with that, let's go to our next viewer question. This is Liz. Hi, my name's Liz, and I really would love to know what you're going to do with the congestions in the traffic in Toronto. It's really bad. <laughs> All right, let's begin this discussion with Mitzi Hunter yeah, and Josh Matlow. Everybody okay? Got some water in you? Uh, you each have 45 seconds. We're going to begin here with Mitzi Hunter. So, Liz, absolutely. It is really bad, our traffic congestion. And it's a sign of a, a growing city, those cranes that are up building and doing road construction. We're adding more uh, infra critical infrastructure, building new transit. Those types of things are causing gridlock. Under my plan as mayor of the city, I will find many ways of getting people out of their cars and into our transit system, making it free for seniors and wheel trans users, starting the system earlier at 5.30 so construction workers and shift workers can actually get onto our transit system, very practical and pragmatic solutions, as well as in the Office of Traffic Management, having someone that is going to coordinate those projects so that they don't block lanes of traffic unnecessarily in our city. Thank you, Mitzi And that we Hunter. have a well-run and well-managed city low. under my leadership. There's a lot of things that we need to do. We need to build more transit, and I have a plan for that. Uh, we need to, I don't believe that, uh, that construction should have a divine given right to take over a lane for two to three years at a time. Uh, I don't believe that people should be able to get away with just, you know, thinking that their coffee is more important than everybody else and putting their blinkers on during rush hour. I'm going to be increasing the fines on lane hogs. But, you know, the reality is when we're driving in traffic, as I do, I recognize that I'm part of traffic. And the more that we can provide better options and safe options for people to get around, including increasing access to transit and making it safe, reliable, and more affordable, because I rely on transit too, we can relieve congestion. And that is time. Now the two of you can talk to each other. You have two and a half minutes to debate gridlock and the gardener. Uh, let's open this round with Mitzi Hunter. So, Josh, you know, it's good that you've put together a pamphlet for the people, and, uh, and I think that's great. I, I did take a look at it. It's not fully costed. I, I mean, there's three years that, oh, that, of numbers that yeah. are, are missing, but that's okay. Go ahead. But one thing I, I just want to clear up for, for the people, in, particularly in Scarborough, because, you know, you, you talked a lot about that, but you've really been about the downtown. And I don't think that that's that, believable because that's I remember true. you not only trying to block the expansion of the subway in Scarborough, you actually worked really hard at council to delay it. And, you know, that's now, not, now not people to are, it, are to expected to believe it. that you're all of a sudden going to be their champion. I don't think that's believable because you spent so much of your career blocking expansion and investment in the community in Scarborough. Mitzi, Mitzi, that is so disingenuous. First of all, Kevin Page, who was the former parliamentary budget officer of Canada, has said that my plan is costed and funded, and frankly, yours is magical. It's unicorns in the streets paved with gold. It's not real. Moreover, have you read it? I, have you read the seventy pages? Yes, and uh, I, I and, mean, and, and I if I were, and your, frankly, if I were asked, I if I were okay, candidates, Mitzi, 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 Mitzi with all due respect, but, if know, I, I don't think that this is what if I were asked I a lightning round question around what I'd like to read, it's not are, always are about, fiction. It's not about the. It's so, not about. I'm going to give Mitzi Hunter a chance to respond, and allow me, Mitzi, you're interrupting. Mitzi, please, with all due respect, helps no Mitzi, Mitzi, you're interrupting. Okay, the viewers at home cannot hear you, Mitzi Hunter. This isn't helpful to actually be. Mr. Matlow. Yeah. Mitzi Hunter. So if Mitzi I may. Mitzi Hunter, please. Please. Thank you. That's what she was saying. So, you know, 
I have the transit projects that are really going to get this city moving, including expanding the Eglinton East LRT, building a subway along Shepherd Avenue, building out that pink line, line four, and making sure that we have a fully connected city. That's how we're going to solve gridlock in the long term, is making sure that we have a robust transit system that is believable. Josh Matlow. That I will Mitzi, be that champion. Mitzi, just like I've been that Josh, champion. Josh Matlow. Mitzi, 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 my Mitzi, entire Mitzi, political career. Mitzi, and frankly, in my Mitzi, entire... You, you, uh, Mitzi, adult life. I'm not going to ask me, again, Josh me, Matlow. Mitzi, you flip-flopped on transit on Scarborough. You supported the LRT oh, plan. No, 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 then no. you ran I for office. I have been office. relentless it, no, and no, consistent I, I, you, you, in my Mitzi, support the record, of, of Mitzi, investments Mitzi, that, in public transit. Am I, and it's multinational. Okay, I'm going to give. I respond. I'm going to give Josh Matlow Thank ten you. seconds to respond, and then we have to move on. And my plan for Scarborough has been about building more stations. It's a block, block, block investment. This is Josh Matlow's turn, please. Thank you. My plan for Scarborough has been to build more transit stops to serve more people and use every dollar more wisely. Not believable. Mitzi, I, 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 you know what? I, okay, you line. know what? Okay. We can we leave this for on. the open debate, but I really would <laughs> caution candidates. As Lena said, uh, we're seeing on social media people are having a hard time understanding what anybody's saying. So you. if you're all going to talk at cross purposes, nothing ends up on the air. Uh, let's have the other five candidates respond. You each have 30 seconds. And we begin with Brad Bradford. Well, I'll just say what everyone was thinking. That was terrible. Um, we couldn't understand what either of you were saying. Uh, my plan is about common sense solutions that are going to actually get you moving. Uh, Mitzi and Mark Saunders have both adopted my idea now for a congestion relief commissioner. We need someone who is in charge of all of the lane closures, all of the major infrastructure projects here in the city, so that we stop tying up parallel street after parallel street with gridlock. I will rebuild the gardener. And I will do it two years sooner by running 24-7 construction and so we get that's you your moving time. faster. Thank you, Brad Bradford. Mark Saunders, 10, uh, 30 seconds. This weekend was a clear example of the left hand not talking to the right hand. Seven TTC stations that were closed, Lakeshore University, Queen Street, and Queensway shut down as well, too. We definitely need to improve on the gridlock issue. First off, when we talk about bike lanes and having the busiest streets in the country down to a single lane is not a healthy start. Then doubling down today by enhancing it in communities that are outraged about that. Making sure we listen to the communities, it's not a one-size-fits-all, and making sure we do it right by using transit. Thank you, Mark Saunders. We turn to Olivia Chow, 30 seconds. This, I get your frustration. When we're stuck in traffic, I feel my anxiety and my stress level goes up. That's why we need to look at other ways. Look, let's invest in TDC, restore the services, and make it safer to ride, and cycling that is, and to walk so the pedestrian feels safe. We would need to build some housing closer to where people work so they don't have to travel as far. And lastly, let's better coordinate all the construction. Thank that's you, happening. Olivia Chow. Remember, 30 seconds on gridlock and the gardener, Anthony Fury. All these bike lanes are driving people bonkers, and yet City Hall just wants to build more and more of them. I have said as mayor the plans to introduce bike lanes on Shepherd, Eglinton, Bloor Street West, although council just passed that one just yesterday, Kingston Road. Those rapid TO lanes where they take away an entire lane of traffic and paint it red so that every now and then a bus and one or two bicycles in a day pass by. They want to do that. They want to do it on Jane. They want to do it on Dufferin. I'm going to bring sanity back to the bike lane issue. Thank and I won't you, tear down Anthony the Fury. We turn to Anna Bailao. I will bring a balanced and common sense approach to the issue to get you moving in this city. We need to restore the services on the TTC. We need to do construction quicker. That's why I will have extended construction hours so that the much the lot of construction that is happening, a lot of it transit, can happen quicker as well. I will make sure that we use technology as well to get people moving. Things like ticket and towing on rush hour, I will expand that citywide and make it permanent as well. And we need to have a balanced approach, not like uh, uh, some people want to rip up big bike lanes or Olivia Chow you. wants to put them Thank everywhere. Thank you, Anna Bailao. Time for an open debate on gridlock and the gardener. This is five and a half minutes in total. Anybody can participate, but we hope not all at once. I know the stakes are high and the heat is right. up, but uh, let's hear what people are saying. We start with Brad Bradford. Well, I want to draw attention to what Olivia just said. She said, Liz, you need to look at other ways. And that is so disconnected from the reality of hundreds of thousands of Torontonians every day that rely on a vehicle to get around this city. Olivia Chow's plan is to tear down the gardener 
and not rebuild it. She's going to take eight lanes of elevated highway, slam it down at grade through a neighborhood for 240 meters before ramping it right back up to the Don Valley Parkway. All right. This is the busiest trucking corridor in North America. Rochester, Buffalo, Toronto, Montreal, goods and people have to move. Olivia you, Brad is going Bradford. to increase costs. Olivia Chow, increase you raised your hand. You wanted to May respond. I please. Well, that's your plan. You, that is absolutely not true. We're talking oh, no. about one That's kilometer. So you're keeping it up? Uh, well, may I? Are you... uh, one kilometer uh, off uh, between Cherry Street and DVP. One kilometer. The city's tearing it down anyway. To rebuild it. So the question is <laughs> the whether city is we tearing build it down it to rebuild as an it. elevated And you are not going to rebuild it. You're going to take an elevated uh, highway uh, and slam wait, it down well, a grade for a neighborhood. If you and that build is going to increase the cost. Brad Bradford, Expressway. just allow I, Olivia Chow to yeah. complete her thought. The, if you... It's going to come down. If we don't rebuild it up, we can keep it on the ground, and it would open up to four to eight thousand units of housing there. It We're going to build housing. Okay. Okay. We're actually going to build housing on the south. Uh, if I may, Anna Bilal, you, you express some run. degree. Let me just finish. Okay. It will no, still Olivia Chow. Go back up. Thank you. Uh, it will still go back up to. There's thank still you, a ramp Olivia to Chow. go back up to. DVP. Okay. So I feel bad for Liz. I feel bad for folks in Scarborough, Beaches East York, Etobicoke, North York. Because you heard it here finally from Olivia Chow it's tonight. Okay. She, Brad and Olivia, if you Brad, can, I'm put it at Brad, Brad, oh, thank tiny. you, Brad Bradford and Olivia Chow. Um, let me turn to Mitzi Hunter, who signaled me, and then I'm going to Anna Bailao. Sure. So I, I, I think we heard Olivia say that she's not going to rebuild all of it, and the eastern portion is going to stay down. We know that under Brad, um, under Josh. Matt, look, Josh's yeah. plan, yes, <laughs> that it won't be rebuilt at all. So it's going to. Add that, that, to the gridlock and the, and the again, chaos Mitzi. Mitzi, and the that, chaos that that will can we ensue debate facts on rather than make stuff up? And I get you all the people helpful. in the beaches and elsewhere are really terrified of that. I also want to say on the question of bike lanes that what's important is that we keep people safe when they're on bicycles in this city. Too many, we lose too many cyclists. Um, to accidents in the city. We've got to make sure that they are safe when they are riding, and bike lanes do provide that. And let's make sure they're in the right locations it, across our city as well. Roads. Let's make no sure they're in the right locations and that we keep roads. people safe. Okay, Anna Bailo. Uh, so uh, Olivia Chow has another problem as well with the gardener, is that she's counting on that money for uh, to pay for some of her promises. Which and one? staff has already... Which There's no savings. to build? There's no savings. Anna, there's no what savings am I using that money to build? There's I think no, you've got... Uh, there's no savings. Service. There's no that service is on the gardener. The, the, the other plan. thing, the other right? thing is... It's Josh plan. Uh, Olivia, you ran before... What money am I... Okay, Olivia Chow. You ran before on building 200 kilometers of bike lanes. How... How many kilometers are you building this time? That around? is too many but kilometers. Of bike lanes. <laughs> Last may election I, was may I answer the question? That is way too how many. Too how many right. kilometers are you building this so, time around? So and, she's and, saying and I that I'm taking in, the money from Gardner, and no. I am not expecting so a lot of money from Gardner. Why not that follow through on the 2015 that decision is actually that council made to Mr. rebuild it? And make uh, sure that people have Josh an option. Plan. Why Josh don't you, why don't you to follow through on council's plan? Okay, okay, we can't make this all about Olivia Chow. <laughs> I have Chow. not predicted how much <laughs> Let's money turn is to Mark Saunders. Saunders. Yeah, you haven't predicted so anything you haven't in your budget. All right. Like, that's the whole problem. I that's did budget. That's 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 candidates, we, okay. we can't hear you. Hold on. You the people at home cannot hear you when you talk over each other, okay? Your budget, Olivia. All right, thank you. Mark Saunders. I'm going to promise to behave as best as I can. It is a serious issue. We are the worst in Canada, seventh in the world. This is not a good list to be on. So talking about utilizing technology, that'll be a cost reduction as well. We know that when we use technology properly, it can reduce fatalities by up to 20% through the research that I had done when I was on the police service. The other factor that's key and critical as well is, I'm sorry, but places like London and New York, they make sure that when it's development, that it's kept within their own environment. It's not blocking a street. City Hall will charge and make revenue by blocking lanes. They're creating a culture for people not to drive vehicles. I will make sure that everything that I do is geared towards traffic flow because when we're clogged, West does not want to come downtown. East does not want to come downtown. That is bad for business, especially small business that is suffering horribly right now. 30 seconds. 
Are well, we I done? would just say there's nothing more frustrating for Liz and drivers out there than being stuck at an intersection at a green light. You're trying to get into work. You're trying to get home to your family, and somebody is blocking the box. That's why I will redeploy 200 <coughs> parking enforcement officers during rush hour into our 50 busiest intersections all across the city to help flow the traffic better, to get you home to your family sooner. Your time is important to me, and I'm going to be fighting for that at City Hall. we got to get Toronto moving. All right, candidates, thank you for that. We have to move on now. Here's another lightning round question for you. This one's easy. Where is the last place you vacationed? We're going to begin with Josh Matlow. Portugal. Anna Bailao. Good choice. I know, I know. <laughs> Costa Rica. <laughs> Anthony Fury. Prince Edward County, Sandbanks. Great family memories always, every year at Sandbanks. Brad Bradford. I'm trying to think of my last vacation. Let me, let me come back on that. <laughs> you, get, you get one answer, that's it. Give him a break, he has a little newborn. Yeah, okay. All right, all right, we'll, we'll, forgive, we'll forgive you for that. Mitzi Hunter. Jamaica, Jamaica. Olivia Chow. I was skiing in Mont Tremblant Blanc a while ago. And finally, Mark Saunders. The fantastic Niagara Falls. To our next topic now. Garbage pickup, road work, and your children's swimming lessons, just some of the many things City Hall takes care of. However, City Council will pay for services, and we're, yeah, the question would be, how is City Council going to pay for services? Is it a choice between services and taxation? This is our next topic of debate, property taxes and city services. Let's hear from Poonam in North York. I'd love to know what's happening with uh, uh, property taxes and how they're going to be used. Uh, streets are in terrible order. There's homelessness. Uh, how is it that the American states seem to be doing so much better with so much less? Let's begin with our answers. Remember, this is 30 seconds, and we go to Josh Matlow first. Here's the reality. 45, no? We have... 45. Sorry, go ahead, Josh. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, th this is the honest reality. The honest reality is the city has a $1.5 billion shortfall, a $46 billion pressure over the next 10 years, and the last mayor raided the reserves to cover up the shortfall this year. We need to dig out of it, and we need to take our city back and fix our services. I have a plan that the top economist, one of the top economists in Canada has supported and it's all about making our city safe, affordable, and livable. And when I talk about livability, it's about snow clearing, to get it done competently. It's about you know, getting the garbage picked up well and, and, and making sure that our kids can get into rec programs. It's about helping our most vulnerable. It's about getting our roads repaired. We're going to have to honestly That's do, our time, uh, Josh uh, Matlow. Thanks, Josh And, and along Josh with Matlow. raising revenue Thank as well. Thank you. We turn to Brad Bradford. Taxes and services. Is it a choice? Well, look, there is an affordability crisis in this city, and I hear that message every single day. The Bank of Canada just raised your interest rates a uh, point higher. They're likely going to go up even more over the course of the summer, and people are really struggling to put food on the table. They're going in the grocery store. They're seeing the prices escalate. They're having to make choices about what they're putting in the basket. They're visiting food banks more often because there's just not enough money to cover the bills. So while I don't control the interest rates at the Bank of Canada, I do control the tax bill and I have committed to keeping your property taxes at the rate of inflation or less. We have to get more juice from the squeeze at City Hall. We have to do more with less, just like all the families, new Canadians and seniors out there on fixed incomes who are struggling to get by. City Hall has to do a better Thank job you, Brad for Bradford. accountability. Thank you very much. Now, the two of you have two and a half minutes to discuss together the issue of taxes and city services. Josh Matlow, you get to start. Brad, as you know, I believe uh, that our reality calls on us to both raise uh, property taxes just by you know, $5.55 a month per homeowner to be able to increase our ability to prepare the services and fix our city. I also have a plan to manage the budget more responsibly along with ensuring that we have a new deal with other levels of government. You at least have said that you acknowledge that revenue needs to be raised even if I disagree with how much you said you're going to do. And I would have, you, have you heard anything from Mark Saunders to make you believe that his just he's going to cut things without saying what he's going to cut is actually going to balance the budget? And have you heard Mark Saunders even be able to do the math to suggest all those cuts that people rely on those services for will actually even make a difference? Okay. Well, what I would appreciate 
from you, Josh, is that you've actually put a number on your tax increase. And while I don't believe in making life more expensive for people, what I'm really concerned about is Olivia Chow's 20% tax increase. People can just not afford that right now. She hasn't been honest with the voters about how high she is going to raise their taxes. So we went through it. I added up all of her campaign promises, and I'll run you through the list. 1.83% increase to the city building fund, 2% for her new housing plan, more than 5% for the decommissioning of the Scarborough RT and restoring transit services without the ridership levels to support. That's 3.7%. She also promised to increase services significantly. I don't actually know what that means. I've asked her. She hasn't replied. We're going to put that at five points. A quarter of a percent for overestimating the MLTT. Okay, Brad Bradford, it's a bit of a shopping tax. list. Let's give Josh And so the point chance. is, Josh has provided clarity around how high he is going to raise taxes. Olivia Chow has not. Now, I'll give you an example. Okay, hold on a second, Josh. You get right of reply. No, and I, 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 I do appreciate that because I, I do find these debates frustrating sometimes when I hear Mark Saunders talk about certain cuts, but he doesn't actually tell us how it's going to affect people's lives and the services that they rely on. And they tell us that the services have been declining. They don't want them to get worse. And, and it's correct. I mean, Olivia... I, I hear a lot of stories. I've heard the story about Dahlia, and, and Dahlia, I'm sure, is a wonderful person. But she should you, be getting paid. <laughs> well, but, 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 you, but using up the minute of time or 30 seconds of the time with these stories, and I get that's a debate approach and it's a strategy, but we need to talk about stubs, substance and plans. My plans are on votematlow.ca, and I just and encourage that's, okay, that's, that's our time. time. Understand Josh, what we can Matlow, do. You, you took a shot at Mark Saunders and Olivia Chow. We're going to try and give them a chance to respond to that in the open debate. And I'm sure the rest of you are itching to get in. So let's bring in the remaining five candidates now. You each have 30 seconds to respond and discuss. Remember, we're talking about property taxes and city services. Let's begin with Mark Saunders. I value and respect the taxpayers for all that they do. Affordability right now is at a crisis, whether it's putting gas in your car, or food on your table, or paying for your rent or your mortgage. I will use your dollar to the best of my ability to make sure that I prioritize what the exact needs and wants are for today and also for our future. This is not a time to be reaching in and pulling money out of pockets just because. Leadership requires discipline, and discipline requires the ability of making decisions and standing behind those decisions. Thank you, Mark Saunders. Olivia Chow, your 30 seconds, please. The city has budgeted the way backwards, and as a result, we're seeing TDC fares going up and the service being cut. I'll start with people, a people-centered approach to budgeting. Look at what services are needed, then have other levels of government join us Find the taxes, especially people that are buying very expensive homes, they can pay a bit more. And then after that, a modest tax increase. Okay, Anthony Fury on property taxes and city services. As mayor of Toronto, I will ensure that we go back to basics and reinvest in those core services that residents rely on. The city budget has ballooned by 50% in the past 10 years, but most residents don't feel like they're getting 50% more services. They feel like they're getting less. So we need to go back and prioritize things like more police officers, public transit, keeping the streets clean, garbage collection, and step away from the pet projects and frills at City Hall. Day one, when I get into the mayor's office, I will start a program and spend and a respect for taxpayers. We have two choices here. One, recognize that there's a, an affordability crisis in our city, and I do recognize that. The other one is keep hiking taxes like Olivia Chow, not even telling you by how much. She thinks that's how we budget. I find that entitled and out of touch because I can't see a working family going out and deciding on what they want and then figure it out how they're going to pay for it. That's not how people do. You budget within your limits, and that's how you spend your money. It's just out of touch. We need an answer. Thank you, Anna Bailao. You too went after Olivia Chow, so we're going to try and give Ms. Chow a chance to respond to that in the open debate. For now, let's hear from Mitzi Hunter. So leadership is about setting priorities, and that's exactly what I have done throughout my career as the Associate Minister of Finance, as the Cabinet Minister for Education, and as CEO of organizations. I put out my six priorities and made that available to the voters before voting day begins. And, you know, my property tax is at 6%. It's 
just similar to what the city council has now at 5.5 percent but there's an innovation there that builds in fairness for affordability and that is time and that thank you mincy hunter three percent for those and under that now months. brings us to another open debate remember candidates we're talking about taxes <coughs> and city services you have five and a half minutes let's begin with mark saunders great thank you so when I talk about prioritizing, with all due respect, Mr. Matlow, well, and I'll speak to Ms. Chow which, as well. Uh, which, I what have are you going to cut? Mark what Saunders, gonna, please. Tell us. I run a billion dollar budget. Mm -hmm. And that means prioritizing what is most important. So when you take a look at what's going on at City Hall today, they're approving more bike lanes. Meanwhile, I'm trying to say to the public, I am not going to normalize walking around people during the broad daylight on some of the major streets. Coming in today, I'm watching a guy doing push-ups on Queen Street West. Mark, it's Push the budget that And we're you know what, when about. we're talking about where we're spending that money, that's where leadership matters. Why for couldn't you manage reason, the police budget, some, Mark? Why was there an exodus of officers when during I had, your years as when chief? I had Why do we have budget? fewer police have officers no problem. now It's about prioritizing ten years and ago making because sure of your ten years that you're chief. spending the dollar to the best. So I was people really haven't been in a leadership Candidates, position. Just a reminder, we are talking about property taxes and city services. Learning on the job. You've said that you can't even understand the budget. We can't, we, with the challenges the city has. Your budget has, doesn't measure outcomes. You, the, the, with the challenges that we have, we can't afford to have somebody learning on the job. We need somebody that is ready on the job. And the Mark, the outcome of your police budget was fewer done. police in our need. city, leading to the crisis Again, we have on our streets now. Getting back. That was the outcome of your police budget. It's one of your police officers. Again. Anthony, what actually has led to the crisis that we have now in our city is the years of underfunding. Keeping it at or below the rate of inflation has created this mess. So why would the people of Toronto want more so you of want the same? Much higher taxes, what, way over inflation. That we want That's enough. Concerning. We, know, we well, want we enough. Want enough. Let's, on a That's second yeah, let's give Mitzi Hunter ten seconds to, build, to finish her thought, and we're going to move a, on. A great city, the city that we want, where young people can afford to live here. We need to build affordable housing. We need to you know, build out transit. We need to be able to find that. And we need Anthony Fury, ten seconds to you about how to pay for it. They need that honesty. They need that transparency. Anthony Fury, please. At home. As candidates One at a time, action. Anthony Fury, and then I'm going to come to Brad Bradford and Anna Bylaw. We're also going to give the former police chief a chance to respond, but Anthony Fury. My commitment is not only to keep property taxes below the rate of inflation, but to not bring in all these other new taxes that uh, the city councillors here have previously voted to proceed with, a municipal sales tax. They actually voted for a study to proceed on that parking levies so that all these strip malls where it's currently free to park, you'll have to pay somehow or the, the property owner will have to pay things road tolls on the Gardner and DVP like uh, Councillor Bradford campaigned on for council re-election. We're not doing those I things. I want to put things Brad in per Bradford. perspective for folks at home. The City of Toronto has a $16.5 billion operating budget. It's larger than most of the provinces here in this country. So I get very concerned when I hear things like Olivia Chow that she's just going to assemble services, programs, do whatever she wants without actually going through the budget and figuring out what it costs. When families in Thorncliffe, when they go to Costco and they go shopping, they're not just pulling everything off the shelves, putting it in the cart and figuring it out when you get to the till. Families, seniors, my family, we have to live within our beans and City Hall has to do the same thing. There are many examples of where we could do it better. Thank with you, more Brad Bradford. Olivia and Chow, you will have a chance to respond to that. But first, let's hear from Anna Bailau, please. It, it, is very, it is very concerning not knowing how much property taxes are going to go up. Because to fill the $1.5 <laughs> billion dollar hole that we have, we've been told that is a 39% property tax increase. And the reality is the city is also dealing with a 46% operating and capital pressure that we have for the next 10 years. What we need to, to ask ourselves is, which candidate is going to be able to get a fair deal for the Mark city Saunders. of Toronto. And I have the experience and the track record to work with other orders of government to bring brilliance to the city. From day one of this campaign, I've started negotiating. Yeah, I Mark have, Saunders. I have a proposal at the table. I've just from, Mark day Saunders. One, I've from day one, other levels of and government. you've missed Bailau. 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 We're going to hear I've from... worked actually at an you've agency never, at City Hall. You've never, Ms. Hunter, Ms. Bailau. Manager, so it's it's that, worked we're hearing from Mark Saunders. That's a good thing. Maybe we need some change at City Hall. What we need is... Mark Saunders, please. They want Mark Saunders, please. We might have to cut your mics. Mark Saunders, please. Thank you. Right now, we have two levels of government that are not helping the city of Toronto. They're both saying very clearly, we have given you billions of dollars, you're not spending it right. That is the calling that is going on right now. When you have a city hall, 72 strategic plans with your tax dollars, that means there is no real strategic plan. Being a leader means you make the decisions that are most key and important, but it also 
is not about raising taxes. Twenty four percent. Twenty. Sorry. Twenty five percent. Olivia Chow okay, is going to raise Josh taxes. Okay, Josh Matlow has been trying to get in here. I have to give I, uh, Olivia Chow a chance to respond, I, I, and then I, I, we go I to do jo find Josh Matlow. I mean, uh, Mark Saunders literally has been taking a paycheck from Doug Ford to advise to privatize Ontario Place. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I, I'm going to stand up for the green belt. So it's a gift for our kids, not not Doug Ford's friends. I'm going to be actually standing up so that the Science Centre isn't just ripped away from Thorncliffe and Flemington Parks. Mark Saunders literally last ran twenty seconds to, to Olivia Chow because I promised. Yes. <laughs> when we invest in the city, we make life more affordable and more uh, accessible and more livable. That's the kind of caring city we need to build. I this spent ten years question, on the budget Olivia. committee, and I time. know how to put a budget together. Okay, and that is our time on that segment. Thank you, candidates. Before we move to our final theme, it's time for a lightning round question, and I'd like to invite our candidates to name a Toronto figure, living or dead, I'll give you margin, who you admire. Remember, you have about 15 seconds, but we frankly prefer just the name. We'll start with Mark Saunders. A political figure? <laughs> no, a, uh, a, question? a Toronto figure, living or dead. Oh, my wife. That's my teleprompter. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> I admire my wife. I've got a kidney from her. And she's a great mother and okay. a great wife. Josh Matlow. Of course it's my family, but if I'm thinking of a figure outside of our home, it would be David Crombie. Anna Bailau. I would have to say my parents. Anthony Fury. I always admired the common touch that Rob Ford had to stand up for the little guy, and I think that's lacking from City Hall right now. We need to bring back respect for, for the regular folks. Brad Bradford. Oh, it would have to be my wife, Catherine. Uh, she was born and raised in Toronto and adopted me as a Hamiltonian into the family, into the city. So, Catherine. Mitzi Hunter. Masai Ujiri. He brought the NBA title to Toronto. And Olivia Chow. <laughs> Lloyd McHale, who just passed away, he was the head of the Mandela oh Foundation God. and brought thousands <laughs> and thousands of students across the city to uh, understand the impact Nelson Mandela had for the world. Okay, thank you, Olivia Chow. Some thoughtful answers there. Our final topic tonight, livability and the state of the city. Those words mean different things to different people, but at the core, it is about where we work, live, raise our families, and enjoy our free time. Neighborhoods, developments, and the condition of the roads are the focus of this segment. And with that, here's a question from Sarah tonight. Take a listen. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I have a question for the mayoral candidates. How are you going to help communities manage the development that the province has created? All right, Brad Bradford and Mark Saunders, you each have 45 seconds to respond to that. Let's begin with Brad Bradford. Well, Sarah, thanks so much for the question. There's no doubt that we need more housing in the city because we have a housing crisis, but the way we do that development and manage that process is really important. There was a provincial report the Ontario Housing Task Force put out uh, last February, and one of the recommendations, number 47 and 48, said that if municipalities agree to hit their housing targets, the province needs to come through with a municipal infrastructure fund. And that's the challenge right now. We have to, because of provincial changes, approve those projects, but we need to make sure that we have the dollars to support the growth. <laughs> Investment in transit, community centers, parks, roads and infrastructure, our schools, that has to be done with both our provincial and federal that partners. That is time, Brad Bradford. Work, on, work Thank with them you, together. Mark Saunders. If we're going to create a healthy community in the city of Toronto, the most important thing is dealing with communities by communities. Time after time, it's been said that this is a city of two, it is the tale of two cities, and they're right, but no one really speaks to the other city. The folks that are living in neighborhoods right now where there is a lot of violence, they're exposed to a lot of things, and they have normalized it. And City Hall neglects to talk about those discussions on how to reinforce the necessary resources to help the quality of life. When I am mayor, I'm going to make sure that every voice is heard, not just the special interest folks that seem to be moving our city in the wrong direction, but everyone's going to have a voice at the table because that is going to be key and critical. When we talk about livability, it includes livability for everyone that has an opportunity of living in this city, and I'll make sure that I work with everyone. All right. Mark Saunders, Brad Bradford, you now have two and a half minutes to debate each other on the topic of livability and the state of Toronto. Brad Bradford. 
Well, we want a city that provides opportunity for everyone. And I hear Olivia's story about Dahlia in the basement. Uh, you know, and it's, it's too common where folks are fighting, bidding wars to find access to housing. And the first thing that you need to satisfy when you move here is somewhere affordable to live. And that is why we need to make sure that we are getting more housing built. We need to usher in an era of accountability at City Hall. I worked in the chief planner's office. I saw it myself. There was a lack of accountability, divisional silos, and that pervasive attitude that whatever doesn't get done today will get Let's done tomorrow. Let's give Mark tomorrow. Saunders a have, chance to weigh in here. We have to build for tomorrow. And right now we know that 500,000 people are going to be coming into this city. They're going to be newcomers and they don't come with bikes and they don't come with cars. And none of the stories at City Hall have ever addressed those concerns. I came into this country in 1967. My parents were brave enough to come in with six kids to get a better education. If we're not going to be a healthy and vibrant city, we're not going to be addressing the newcomers. This city will fail. We will lose the economic drive that we need. Newcomers are going to be coming in to build this city. But if would, we're not setting up properly... I would agree with you. I would agree. Like, you know, Toronto is the most diverse city in the world. That, of course, is a tremendous benefit. We have immigrants that are coming here that are doing the jobs that we need. And yet we hear time and time again, it has never been less affordable in this city. It's never felt less safe. And it's never been harder to get around. So when I hear some of the candidates on this stage saying that the way to address the housing crisis is to build more bureaucracy, my head spins a little bit because that, you know, when I got hired at the city of Toronto, it took 11 months for me to get hired. And so the idea that you're going to stand up the largest development corporation in the country to build housing is, is ludicrous. We need to remove the red tape. We need to remove the barriers, get shovels in the ground faster so that we have housing opportunities for all the new, new Canadians and immigrants that make tremendous contributions to our city, to our fabric, to our businesses and to our communities, just as you were saying. But the last piece, today when I was talking, I was in Barber Hall Park, and I was talking with a, man, a gentleman who, 2011, through head trauma, now is having issues trying to recover. He said that he was happy with the plan that I was talking about because that plan will deal with people in real time on the streets, having more resources that are available. We have to make sure that we have more resources helping right at the ground level and still instead of waiting for disorder to occur. Thank you, Mark then, Saunders. Thank you very much. Uh, the remaining five candidates now each have 30 seconds to address livability and the state of the city. We start with Olivia Chow. Every time I get through a pothole, my teeth are chattering. And, and, and then when I get to a park, and especially in wintertime, the washrooms are all closed. This is a legacy of 10 years of City Hall that didn't put people at the heart of the city. Then I forgot the part about being public in terms of the public services. As your mayor, I'll invest in our city to make it more livable, more affordable, opening longer our libraries, our community center, our swimming pools, even yes, the Thank washroom. you, Olivia Chow. We turn to Anthony Fury. Now is a time for choosing, and we have to decide whether or not we want our city to go more in the direction of those awful scenes in Seattle, San Francisco, downtown Vancouver. I'm saying we have to turn Toronto around. I'm also surprised that nobody else has really been talking about the local economy in this mayor's race. I will bring in pro-business policies to help bring jobs, to grow the economy. We can't share the wealth if we don't first grow the wealth. We need a vibrant downtown core that will spill over into the suburbs. Good jobs in this city, and I will be that Thank ambassador you, for Anthony this city Fury. all across the world. Thank you very world. much. We turn to Anna Bailao. You know that sense of opportunity that I talked about, that I felt when I was 15 years old? That's what I want to bring back. And we bring back, as mayor, by fixing services, core services that are essential for our day-to-day -day life, services like the TTC, services like our recreational services, making sure we're building more housing so that our youth and our workers are not getting pushed out of our city. But to do that, we also need to manage the growth and the change that is happening, because that will define us as a city. That's what will make us continue to attract Thank the you, brightest Anna and attract the Thank investment Thank you very much. City of Toronto. Mitzi Hunter. Toronto is a livable city because it has a vibrant arts sector. I want to make sure that Toronto has a global reputation as a creative city. We need our main streets to be vibrant. I talk to small businesses and they're worried that they can't continue. 
You know, that's why I want to cancel the fees for Cafe TO. Make sure we support those small businesses on Main Streets. If you look at Queen, Gerard, many of our streets, you see boarded up uh, businesses. And we've got to bring Toronto back. Under my property tax, small businesses will not see an increase. Thank you, Betsy Hunter. I want to invest Hunter. in them Thank as they much. are the ones that are employing people in our city. Time now for an open debate. Oh, so, Josh Matlow. Oh, I'm sorry, Josh Matlow. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> sorry, Josh Matlow. I, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm running to make a city that works, one that is safe, affordable, and livable. And I'm going to be opening up libraries on Sundays, schools during after hours for community use and programs. I want to see us have our planners not just react to development applications, but forward plan communities to make sure that there are services and infrastructure and parks to support the growth in the neighborhood. I know that this city can be what we know it can be, what I believe it can be, but we need to be intentional. And I'm ready to be your mayor, and I'm ready to get that done. Thank you, Josh Matlow. All right, now it's time for an open debate. I like very much that uh, all seven of you have very much opened up this topic because it's really, in our final segment, the umbrella for everything. And it's about living in our city, being proud of our city. So you have five and a half minutes. Please behave. We begin with Olivia Chow. Yes. Uh, it seems like everybody's waiting. They wait for uh, the Chow care services. Uh, parents are waiting for parks and recreation programs for the kids. Uh, Cafe TO, small businesses are waiting for their permits to get approved. Why is it for all the councils been there we're, for the last we're few waiting years? For an answer Why is it change. that there's the services that should be at the heart of what city deliver forgotten the people, and then everybody's end up waiting for I all these programs. Okay. So I agree waiting. with you. We have to go back John, to basics, and we have John, to get the you know core services. Hold on a for? second. Yeah. We're, we're Anthony, Anthony Fury, and then we'll come to Anna Bynum. Yeah, we have to get the Macy core services Hunter. going That's again, right. but we can't do it with, with filling every major road with bike lanes, tearing down the gardener, increasing taxes so high. That makes the city less livable. That gives us less of a capacity to have those core but services Anthony. that residents rely on. We Let's need to some of the other candidates. small business is yeah, so big jobs coming to Anna town. Anna I, I was yeah. just going to say, Olivia, we're also waiting for an answer from you on how much you're going to raise property taxes. Yes, and yeah. how much okay. you're going to... So, so we're, so we're, you're things. talking, we've but, been waiting and waiting, and we're waiting for that. We're waiting for that answer as well. John. But we also need to make sure that on the transit and on the housing that we need to be built as well, we need the cooperation of the other so ones. Of the Hunter. No say, other files that we need okay. bigger cooperation as well. So, Betsy Hunter. Olivia, I, you pulled some ideas from my plan. I see that with the library services, with the water, fount water fountains open in the parks. And, you know, we love our parks in Toronto. I know that people love their parks. We have to figure out how we're going to pay for it. I've been so clear and transparent and open with the voters to show them how I will pay for my priorities. You have not done that. About, you know, for an example, That's going back to Sarah's, too, no? just I want to just quickly go back to Sarah's question because she asked about, you know, the federal government and uh, the provincial governments, uh, you know, putting responsibilities on Toronto, like refugees, uh, you know, yes, a third well. of the people yes, in I our mean, shelters are refugees. I will fight for that $130 million but, okay. from the federal government to pay and to, uh, we're, for the services we're, that we're provide in I'll our come to you in a moment, waiting. but I... We're I, talking about waiting, and I want to give you an example of the culture Okay. The endless Hold on a sec. I was going to go to Mark okay. Saunders. I will come, come back to you. And remember, we're talking here about livability. A lot right. of people yes. seem to be focusing, focusing on budget and taxes. We're talking livid, well, livability. Well, that that contributes to livability, right? I yes. Yeah. I'll wait. I'll be good. <laughs> All right, Brad Brad. Okay, here we go. I, I want to give you an example of the endless debate, deferral, and delay that is holding our city back. All of those services, the programs that we're talking about, it is Olivia Chow's NDP colleagues at City Hall oh. that are constantly obstructing progress. And I'll give you an example. Today we had an agreement with the province, $230 million of funding for transit. One of Olivia Chow's NDP colleagues moved a motion to cease negotiations with the province, to move the goalposts on an agreement that we have been working on in March. And the reality is that is not serious government. That's not how we work with the province. That's not how we work with the federal government to get things done. If Olivia Chow is mayor, you can count on chaos, you can count on broken down relationships, and you can count on your tax bill going through the roof. All right, hey, now I you're ready. No, that, I'm, I'm, it was, hold on a second. Me I know he did. I will come to you, but Mark Saunders. Thank you. When I knock on doors, I hear over and over again, random crime and disorder is the number one issue. It's changed behavior as a result of their concerns, making sure that they're the right agencies in the right place to deal with that. Yes, from the grassroots level, but also from the enforcement level is where I stand. Olivia Chow 
will defund the police. Every opportunity she's had to try to remove money from law enforcement, well, she has year after year. But the second piece, too, though, the taxes are going to be 25 percent. That's the equivalent of about $2,000 per person Mark. if you own a home. Okay. Mark, you, all, can I, we, you know what, Mark? Hold on a second. Can we get back on topic? And Josh yeah. Manlow, I forgot you before, but I won't forget you this <laughs> yes, time. It, We're I, talking I, about name, livability. That's exactly the response. Like, it's not just I'm sorry, one I, I said Josh Manlow. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, I'll never forget you. Thank you. <laughs> and, 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 and frankly, and I'm not going to forget Trontonians. I mean, my, my job as nice. mayor, my job as mayor is going to be to level with Trontonians and be honest <laughs> about what it's gonna take. And as I said, we need to do a combination of things. Yes, we're gonna have to raise revenue a little bit. We're also gonna have to manage the budget far more wisely, and I've put in my plan very clear ways to do that. And we're also gonna achieve a, a new, uh, Anthony, we're gonna need to, a new deal with the province and the federal government. And if you and Mark are gonna do everything that Doug wants you to do, that's not gonna cut it. Okay. We need, ha we need like money for housing, for transit, questions? for our priorities. Yeah. 45 seconds and, on and the, the clock. The, the and go along to Josh get along Manlow. approach with Doug Ford does not work. Thank you, uh, Olivia Chow. Yes, um, Brad, it doesn't matter how many times you say it, um, I would like you true, to say it. I actually I would want like to you say to say it. Okay, allow her to speak. Raise the taxes. Allow her to speak. I would like to speak. Speak. Olivia to say it. Brad. Subways. Uh, it, the young line, you see the cars, the subway cars. Oh, that was hang on. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Olivia, yeah. stop trying to flex and, and take credit for things that other people did decades ago. It's dishonest with Rondonians. What we want you to say is how high you're going to raise people's property tax bills. I was a member of parliament for eight years. I know how to... I know how to negotiate, especially in a minority government. No, 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 that's uh, not true. Which is what is All right. happening now. That's so our time. That is our time. Candidates, that, 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 that concludes our, our final how open you debate. You negotiate that concludes our final open, open debate. Nope, we're done here, Mr. Bradford. You have to give us a gavel next time. We, we've killed your microphones. That's what it's come to. You've left us no option. Uh, we have debated and discussed a number of issues tonight. It's been quite the night, hasn't it been, John? Uh, but there is just one more thing, and you each have about 50 seconds to answer this one. One at a time, please. 45. Let's do 45 seconds here. We want to know what is the first thing you will accomplish, your top priority, in the first 100 days in office if elected mayor of Toronto and will be at your office on October 4th to keep you, uh, to see if you've kept your promises. So let's begin with Mark Saunders. Thank you for listening and paying attention. Uh, the absence of people saying things should be grave concern to you when you're not hearing what they're going to be paying for taxes. When I get into office, transit is a huge issue. Affordability, affordability is a second issue and as well as affordable housing. Those things are going to be key and critical. I will make sure that I speak with City Council, each and every member, to make sure that they're part of the team to move forward. If I am mayor and when I'm mayor, you have voted for me, which means Council will work to make sure that we move to the City of Toronto's needs, to Torontonians. Having every voice at the table is critical, not just the loudest voice in the room, which has tilted us in the wrong direction. I'll lead and get us back to where this city deserves to be. Thank you, Mark Saunders. Olivia Chow, what is the first thing you will accomplish in the first 100 days if elected? I would bring in a strong team to start building housing, especially affordable housing. I would improve the TDC services and start working on a new deal for the city so that we could partner with the provincial and the federal government. I will also invite you to help me create a city that is more caring, more affordable, and safer for everyone. I know we can do this because I've seen it done before, and because I've been a member of parliament and a city councillor before, I know how to make things happen. So join me, and I hope I can be your mayor on June 26. Anthony Fury, your 45 seconds. I'm the father of three small kids. I know this city, I love this city, and Toronto's a city worth fighting for. And I believe we can fix the challenges that we face. And as mayor, right when I get into the mayor's office, I'm gonna phase out those drug injection sites, replace them with treatment centers. I'm gonna hire 500 more police officers so they have a visible presence on our streets, public transit, and in our communities. And I'm going to say no more bike lanes on major roads. I'm going to do a program review where we ensure that we're getting respect for taxpayer dollars. I love this city. It's a great city, and it's been such an honor to meet everyone all across this city of all walks of life. Anna Bailao. 
Uh, on day one, I'll be ready to roll up the sleeves uh, and tackle the challenges of the city. My three top priorities for the first the 100 days are transit, fixing transit, making sure that we get uh, safety and uh, hire the more staff, making sure that uh, I meet with the Prime Minister and I meet with the uh, Premier because we need a new deal. And I have those relationships. I have the track record of getting, getting it done for the city. I've been at those tables. Number three, make sure that we start building housing, both with the provincial and the federal government, by also by initiating a mayor's task, uh, a mayor's initiative on intensification as well. This is a city of opportunity. I've had the opportunity to serve as city council for 12 years, as a deputy mayor for five. I have support of seven Thank you, Anna Bailao. Mitzi Hunter, what is I'm the first thing you will accomplish in the first 100 <clears throat> days if elected? Leadership is about setting priorities. I've been so clear with the voters, I've put forward my plan to fix the six, the six key priorities that will get that done. Building more housing, making sure that the TTC actually gets moving and is safe for people to ride on. Also making sure that our city it continues to be livable. We fix those things like the potholes and, and the clearing the snow and that we have the funding to do that. You have three big questions. Who's been transparent with you? Who has that commitment to get it done? And who has that leadership? I have that leadership. I have that commitment. I love this city and I want to make sure that people like Daniel who grow up here and go to school here can afford to live here in our city. And that is time, Josh Matlow. I will demand honesty and accountability. I will focus on reversing the cuts to the TTC, move forward with our public build initiative to actually get affordable housing, deeply affordable housing uh, created, and focus on the budget. Because if we don't focus on the budget immediately, we're not gonna be able to improve the services that we rely on every single day. And that has to be our priority. Our priority needs to be a livable city, a city that we're proud of, a city that we're not just waiting for the city to come through for us when it comes to clearing the snow, repairing the roads, and helping our most vulnerable, but a city that works, a Toronto that I know is possible, and I need your help, I need your vote, because I'm the only one who will stand up for you. Thank you, Mr. Matlow. And the last word goes to Brad Bradford tonight. Toronto, as you heard tonight, I'm an urban planner, I'm a city councillor, and as of last Monday, I'm the father of two baby girls. And that's who I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the young families who are trying to build community here in the city. I'm fighting for new Canadians who are betting on this country and betting on this city. And I'm fighting for seniors who have given so much to Toronto and contributed to what it is today. I'm gonna deliver real results for you with less talk and more action. I'm gonna do that by ushering in an era of accountability at City Hall with clear mayor's mandate letters that outline the deliverables that you can expect from our civil service and me from your mayor. Strong leadership to deliver strong results that will make a difference in and your everyday life. And that is our Thank show you. tonight. Thank you to all of the mayoral candidates for spending your evening with us. Mark Saunders, Olivia Chow, Anthony Fury, Anna Bailao, Mitzi Hunter, Josh Matlow and Brad Bradford. And thank you to all the viewers and listeners for tuning in tonight. Remember, election day is June 26. One of these seven candidates could be the next mayor of Toronto. But don't go anywhere. The candidates, they're going to take off their mics and head downstairs to speak with reporters. We'll bring that to you live on CP24 along with political analysis. And the show continues with expert analysis on News Talk 1010. Thanks for watching. Good, Good night. night.